Welcome to 9 a.m. to the Monday, November 18th, 2024. Uh, select board's meeting. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Where do you go? I don't know. I just... <laughs> We'll just give a second. send an additional one which I saw in the second one but I looked in the first one and I didn't see it. Yeah I didn't see that one the first one either but <clears throat> okay. Just want to make sure that it was straight. There's a lot of attachments in the first one. Yeah. The 76-2 I didn't get sent in the first email. Does he have it over there? Yeah signature folder. Um <clears throat> So that one was, you actually, you weren't here, but um, it was approved two meetings ago. That was the one for the Pawtuck Way Lake State Park. Okay, that there was a bond that. requirement, so it's coming back forward. Uh, the bond has now been posted. Hmm. Okay. I was saying, I was looking through, I'm like, I don't, I don't see it. I may not have sent it. Either that or it didn't get attached. It was sent the other time, I think. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to wait for Steve to come back. Again. Okay. <laughs> right. I know. I thought I just saw. We good? We good. Uh, all right. So, anybody have any questions on the uh, who wants to do payroll manifest? No, nope. I make a motion to approve the manifest for 11 12 2024 and payroll for 11 12 2024. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, was there any edits or anything to the minutes? We have the 11 4 and the 10 28. Right, so we got three. We got and then we have non public for 20 and 28. Yep. So, um, do we do them all together? Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we were all, all four of us were there. All right. 11 4 and 10 28. I'll state it in my motion. I make a motion to accept the meeting minutes of 1028, both public and non-public, and 
11 for public. I second. So we have a motion of second for the minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Match the line abstains for the three. Good. <coughs> uh, reports from boards and committees. I'll start off with the planning board. We had a workshop. Uh, we had three agendas on the workshop, but we only seemed to get, seemed to get through one. Uh, so the ones we didn't talk about were uh, detached ADUs, and we were we kind of got into steep slope ordinances, which is going to be designed more for new subdivisions that go in. Let's say there's like a hill instead of them destroying the whole hill in order to make the grade, you know, having some sort of thing that you can't when it's 25% or, or, you know, so that'll come back up. We will probably have having a second workshop since the, there really isn't anything coming in front of us. And then we talked about, it wasn't about properties. It was just, it was their workshops. So we were talking about policies. One policy was steep slope ordinance. One was uh, detached ADUs, and then the other was building envelopes. And the wording of how the building envelopes took quite a long time to figure that uh, <laughs> to figure that out on making sure that it jives with the zoning ordinances and that. Yeah, so we won't go back into that hour and a half discussion on that. So, uh, but we're going to have another workshop to continue those up, and then one of the other discussions that happened was for our updating of our master plan, which is long overdue. So you'll actually see that. Um, I think there's some line items in the budget about that. So that's planning. Anybody else want to go? Anybody else have anything to say? So CIP met the hour before this. Uh, we spent most of the time talking with Jen Phillips from the library about um, <coughs> the need for the um, lower level exit strategy. Um, it's currently a safety hazard, not ADA compliant. Um, right now, there is a way out um, to the back. I'm going to just call it patio for lack of a better word, uh, but you can't get around to the front of the building. Um, there's some steps that are there, but they're kind of dangerous. Um, they had two items in the CIP, one for like 50000 for a pathway and one for like 50000 to do um, fix the area by the left hand side door facing the building and the steps there um, we put them in one item because the project really should be handled together um, and we're going to try and set up a meeting with Steve to see if there's any of that that we could potentially do in-house and hopefully save us some money we'll have the next meeting probably in a couple weeks I think Nothing with the lower parking lot. Uh, we didn't really discuss it yet. Okay. I mean, other than yes, there's it, it's already part of the CIP. Right. Um, we didn't really, you know, the, we would talk. Basically, we we're talking about the path potentially joining to that lower, the quote unquote lower parking lot where the old PD was, uh, just as a. And do they think they need both sides to have access? No, well, so there's a back door. Right. So you're talking a, left and right side of the building. Well, that was one of the quotes that they got was, or somebody came back with a quote to do it on the right side. Somebody came back with a quote to do it on the left side. We think that probably keeping it on the left side makes the most sense because okay. we could kind of okay. put the back door and the side door together and have a sloping path up to the quote unquote lower parking lot. Okay. But we want to talk to Steve to yep. see if they get that out. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh rec as we saw the gym floors in, I'm not gonna steal you a thunder. <laughs> um 
There is a Friends of Nottingham Park and Rec meeting tomorrow night at 6.30 here in the kitchen for folks that are interested in supporting that new uh, venture to support um, additional funding for like pickleball courts. Tomorrow night, correct. 6.30. Thank you. Um, this Friday they have their infamous dodgeball and donuts. I expect to see all of you there where kids consume donuts and then run around for 20 minutes throwing dodgeballs at each other and luckily nobody has vomited as well, of yet. Well I was going to ask if, <laughs> if they're eating donuts and running yeah. around. Yeah, my son's dogs. participated three times and... Where is that located? It's at the school. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, and this year... time? Excuse me, Steve? What time? Um, I believe it's at 6, 6 p.m. Friday? This Friday night. You can sign up on the website. Uh, this year for the first time, or this, this time for the first time, they're uh, having adults play. So if you'd be interested, maybe we could put a, together a select board team and uh, get out there and throw some balls at each other. Um, but so it should be, it's a fun event. The police department's there and they referee and the kids have an absolute blast. So, um, and then there's going to be disc golf cleanup this Saturday. Um, Is sorry. it on Sunday? Yeah, Sunday, 11-24. Um, it's being facilitated by Dan Bunker, who's been the person behind developing that disc golf course over at Marston. Uh, but feel free to reach out to the rec or Dan Bunker for more information about that, um, basically cleaning up the course over at Marston. And that's going to be at Marston? Yes. That's cool. What Dan does is fantastic. I never realized how complicated disc golf is. So presently, there's a nine hole there, right? Is that what it is? Well, they haven't installed it. Yet. They haven't got the cages. They, they got yet. the funding for the cages. They've got so this cleanup is going to be for the to get it ready for the spring, so they can put them in. Correct. Because you, you'd have to reach out to Dan. To I think he's trying to coordinate that. Thanks. Sunday. Yeah. I yeah. think there was something actually on the. Was there something on the uh, town website about on that the, on the rec yeah. side? Yeah. That had that. And then the holiday parade is scheduled for Saturday, December seventh. Uh, it starts at 10 a.m. <clears throat> and I believe you have until the end of this week if you'd like to have a float or walk in the parade. So we'll probably okay. continue the same tradition that we've been doing for quite a few years. Yeah, for as long as I know. So you're gonna walk? I uh, I plan on it. Good, I'll, absolutely. I'll be away the for the weekend, so I will not be able to walk in the parade. Which is oh. disappointing because my son's baseball team won the championship this year, and they'll be they'll be walking, but he won't be able to walk in it. So on December seventh. Yep. <clears throat> it starts at ten, but you should be here at nine thirty. Where does it actually go from where we are? It goes from here, and then it goes down. It I think it goes Church left Street, and then around 156, Church Street. Church Street. Oh, yeah. Church Street. Up 156, down Church, down Church. 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 Uh, yeah. Triangle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you get to see it twice. It's phenomenal. No. If you're sitting in front of a librarian. Um, budget committee, we met twice last week, Tuesday and Thursday. We met with all of uh, the departments and heard their requests for the budget. Uh, reviewed the tax cap calculation that we, we will be reviewing tonight as a select board uh, and the approximate amount of money that can be raised through taxation to keep us under the 4% tax cap. Uh, and then Ellen presented to them um, Alan's Alan Trance facility report that he had presented to us. She handed it out to the budget committee so they can understand the over two hundred thousand dollars in uh, maintenance items that we would like to complete in the next few years. Perfect. And no elections, so nothing to report for the election. Uh, town Minister's report. Okay. Um, as Tim stated last week, we uh, shut down the gym from Tuesday on. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday was dedicated to um, leveling the floor, encapsulating the um, asbestos glue that was found present before they laid down the new floor, which um, they finished that up on Friday afternoon. They did a fantastic job. If you haven't been in there to see it, I recommend you flick the light switch on on your way out. Um, it really brightened up the room, and we're hopeful that it's going to last at least a decade, if not more. <laughs> uh, but Wilders did a, a great job. They were very efficient. Hey, did you say that they encapsulated the asbestos 
capture the, uh, the, um, the asbestos. Uh, There's asbestos glue that was detected under the floor tiles. But it's cool. They didn't have to get rid of it. They didn't. Correct. That, that's cool. Thank you. Um, so that has been done. Um, I also took advantage of the facility being completely uh, vacant for the weekend and had a company come in and do some spot stripping and waxing. Obviously, this was one of the rooms that saw it and it's been at least a, a year, maybe a year and a half since it was last done. So uh, three to four layers of wax coating. And then, of course, we had to shift all the furniture around again. So we'll see how long it lasts with the um, salt. But the, the floor was extremely run down and very porous, so it would have absorbed all the salt that would have been brought in with the winter traffic. So this will hopefully protect it until we can figure out a solution in the long term. But here we are. Um, so the American Red Cross blood drive that was scheduled for last Wednesday was moved up to the fire station and then ultimately they ended up, I'm sorry, it was last Thursday. Um, they ultimately had to cancel it because they didn't have enough staff to be able to hold the blood drive. So that's been rescheduled for December 4th and it will be back here at the community center as originally planned. Um, I don't have the, I don't have it right off the top of my head, but the, the postings are out here in the hallway. I can get the time for you. Um, the grader is still experiencing some electrical wiring issues. They did replace the solenoid in it and there was, it was still experiencing some backing up issues. Um, it's very intermittent, so they know it's within the wiring. It was hauled by flatbed over to windmill and they had a loaner grader that they could lend to us. Um, we're literally being charged only for the time that we use it. We just have to keep track of our hours, but that at least keeps the fall grading in effect. Um, so last week they were able to take care of Poor Farm, Ledge Farm, and Berry. They're going to go back to Mitchell Road tomorrow. Uh, they had two culvert replacements scheduled. One was last Thursday on Saks Road. Uh, they pretty much got set up and ready to go and we had a property owner that was expressing some concerns about the culvert replacement. Uh, we had some back and forth conversations, both Steve and I, and we just decided that it would probably be best to take a time out from that project until we can get some things clarified with the property owner. She actually owns, um, her parcel of land extends across Saks Road from the land side to the lake. And um, there was some, some drainage concerns about how reopening the culvert to its natural flow would impact by erosion. So um, we're just going to revisit that. We're actually going to take the time to meet with the property owner and, and get things situated there. But So that one got paused, but they were able to take care of another problem culvert on Shore Drive this morning. Um, so that's just part of the road maintenance program now that we <coughs> own these roads trying to keep them in good shape. <laughs> um, so moving on, a few months back the six-wheel dump truck was put out of service. It was experiencing compression issues. It's been in the shop since. Um, the bottom line is the repair that it needs it was a motor replacement. So. We were originally estimating that the repair going through replacing valves was going to be in the twenty to $25,000 range. Um, we're now looking at an estimated repair replacing the whole motor at twelve to 15000 so it's a lot less than we were originally estimating. I, I don't, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not even gonna try to come up with why the cost is half of is what we were originally for, estimating. I'm sorry, yeah. Is it, is it I, I don't know if it's a reman. Um, it, I, I'm not 100% sure. I just got the information from Steve this afternoon. So um, all I know is that the parts are supposed to be in early this week, and they're hoping that it's only going to take about four to five days to complete the repair, so it should be back on the road. Um, the only other thing that it needs <coughs> is a leaf spring in order to pass inspection. So um, that hopefully before snow flies, we'll have that truck back on the road. Which truck is? Uh, it's the six-wheel dump truck. And um, I, I had reported to you in between the meetings the transmission repair for the 2023 Ford Explorer Police Cruiser. Um, we were a mere less than 300 miles out of warranty, and so we, we paid for the transmission repair. 
um, Chief Woodman went to Ford Motor Corp and they honored the warranty on it. So they've reimbursed us for that repair. So that is all taken care of, which is a breath of fresh air. <laughs> um, there are a couple of things that the police department is looking for. Uh, the first thing is um, the body worn camera equipment grant that they applied for and were successful in obtaining last year. Um, we have an annual appropriation for the next four years. Last year was year one. Um, the invoice is $6,993, half of which will be coming from the Police Technology Equipment Fund. The other half of the invoice gets reimbursed. Um, we pay it out of the general fund. It gets reimbursed by grant funding. So I would be looking for a motion to withdraw half of that invoice or up to $3,500 from the Police Technology Equipment Fund, as you are agents to expend from that fund. Um, so the uh, $3,500? Correct. Right. I'll make a motion to withdraw $3,500 from the Police Technology Equipment Fund for the appropriation of our half of the body-worn worn camera equipment. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, same fund. They just purchased a new radar gun from Custom Signals Inc. for the amount of 2915 This is the type of equipment that they have to re replace periodically and the reason why we established this expendable trust fund. So I would be looking for another motion to withdraw $2,915 from that police technology equipment fund. I'll make a motion to withdraw $2,915 from the Police Technology Fund to purchase a new radar gun. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 And in regard to the new subdivision on Fort Hill Road and Smoke Street, it was subdivision case number 23-004. Um, there's a proposal for two new road names. It's a two, uh, actually a three-phase project. Phase two, which would be the first roadway, um, the developer is looking to have that named as Frederick Way in honor of Dr. Frederick Fernald. And then phase three, that road name, they're looking for either Peekaboo Way or Eleanor Way. Um, the history behind Eleanor Way is it would be in honor of Eleanor Fernald, who donated several parcels of land in town, including the town ball field. Um, so obviously with new road names, there are a list of approved names within the subdivision regulations that the planning board puts out um, that have some type of a history to Nottingham. So you can either de defer to that list or you have accepted road names proposed by the property owner before. So oh, what was the first name? Frederick. Frederick Way. Thank you. So I've put these, um, I guess, two to three road names in front of Dale Sylvia to just double check with the E91 database just to make sure there was no conflicting road names, something that might be confusing from town to town. Um, so I put that over to him today, so it'll probably be tomorrow before I hear back from him anyways, but I am just planting the seed to see if you would be in favor of, a, of accepting a suggested new road name or if you would want to defer to the previously approved names within the subdivision regulations. Oh, when they came in front of the planning board, the two names I believe they did have were Frederick and Peekaboo, but the new Eleanor one is new, but... The road names that are listed by the planning board are suggestions for that people have. Yeah. It's not binding that they have to use any of those. So it's up to our discretion. They're just suggestions for, for people it. who can't think of a name. You right. got it right. So, and they're just there to, you know, keep the spirit of Nottingham with the names and stuff mm -hmm. so that we don't get names that are just way off the spectrum. Super <laughs> exactly. <laughs> stuff like that is something that we would not be uh, in favor of accepting. Uh, but I mean, it does accept it now. Do you need it now? Or are we waiting for Dale? Um, well, I mean, you could accept them as long as Dale doesn't see. That's how we've done it in the past. I mean, I like we the Frederick and Eleanor. Or, or if you want to hold off. Yeah, it seems more consistent with history. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the neighborhood, too. I mean, it would yeah, just be like, for oh, we're on Frederick. Where I mean, you have like, 
presidential revolutionary like that's all one area Frederick and Eleanor seems to fit well I don't I can't say I know this why peekaboo was there but there is a campground across the street which why I think peekaboo uh, came into a name but uh, I don't know if that to be a hundred percent true fact but uh, let's just say that it's a coincidence it just happens to be something that was I like what? This is like okay. Peeper Lane or something. Yeah. So, <clears throat> that may be. What, what game do they play at the Nudist Colony? Put on poker. Okay, perfect. All right, so, um, do you want to make a motion to just say that we're in favor of whatever name they choose out of those three? Sure, I'll make a motion to accept Frederick Way for the phase two of the Fort Hill Road and Smoke Street subdivision, case number 23-004. Make a motion to accept Eleanor Way for the phase three of the same subdivision case. I second. Uh, we have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Yep. So we choose that they go with Eleanor instead of Peekaboo. Okay. Um, outside of that, we had a very late correspondence two weeks since your last meeting. Uh, there was an email from Jean Reed looking for the fund balance of the conservation um, that is held by the Conservation Commission that was supplied to him to fulfill a request. And William Moranger, who is our um, DRA, Department of Revenue Monitor for all things assessing, um, every time they come out into the community and take a look at whatever it may be, field work or meet with our assessing coordinator, um, they give us what's called a community action report. So in this case, it was um, doing verification on the cyclical inspection, inspections um, that the assessors are out there doing. They just go out in the field and they verify um, measurements. Houses at random. Correct. Yep. yep. Just to spot check our assessors. So they actually did our house. Excellent. They made a big point saying they don't go into the house and all they do is they measure it from the outside mm -hmm. just to make sure their listing data is correct that's it for correspondence that is it for correspondence and that just is it for my report one piece on that they, yes. they had specifically mentioned that our assessed value is 60 percent of yes so can you tell us what that means? So what that means, uh, there is a rule of thumb that you want to be within 10%, either high or low of the 100% mark, and usually that will prompt the town-wide value. You, you want to be as close to market value as, as possible to have a fair assessment, fair tax base. Um, so obviously in 2025, we're ordered for our five-year revaluation as mandated by the state constitution. Um, <coughs> It probably could have happened sooner than now, which is why we're so far askew, but it is coming, so. And in the past, we have come, when they've done this, the five years, usually the vowel will equal out to like 105%. Mm -hmm. So it does affect for that. So they're not coming in at like 90 and watching it drop. They're usually right above that yeah. 100 mark, so. And it is going to be sales driven over the past, <clears throat> the sales that have taken place in the past 18 months. So you're saying it has to be within the recommended is new it's usually you should be about 90 percent of market value or 110 percent when you go beyond the those percentages then it usually means that it's time to reassess reassess and we are Correct. oh just a side note on the culvert replacement on shore driving those roads the town over the years before they became town roads were maintaining culverts and stuff on those roads. It's just not done the right way as it is now. <clears throat> so, just a point. Uh, come on, Skip. All right. Uh, assessing. Okay, we can make a motion to approve intent to cut map 76, lot 2, and map 20, lot 10. Second. Just 7 o'clock. Got it. Yep. <laughs> uh, we have a mo Do we have a second? 
We yes. did. Oh, sorry. Motion is second. Sorry. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Make a motion to accept the certification of yield taxes assessed for map 74, lot one. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And the last one to uh, approve the warrant for yield tax levy, map 74, lot one. Second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 assessing and since we are at seven o'clock right mm -hmm. welcome Conservation Commission who wants to come up we can't have everybody at the table ain't that big but Was this the one that he came from the same three lots that the original house, Mr. Stevens' house, whatever? Then there was another lot, then there was a back lot that was behind there that was no, going to somebody else? No, this is before that, John. Before that, John. Oh, because I thought that lot butted Quincy Pond was basically right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that lot was basically right on Quincy Pond. It's only two lots. There's yeah, there's two lots. There's one lot originally, that second lot that was going, it's kind of long. And then that was the third lot out back, which was being attached to somebody else who has a large parcel of land. Was that the one we were talking about? I think so. Yeah. I think so. That, they were just in front of the planning board. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes. This we good? Be, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Just want to make sure that's the same yeah. same lot that we're, yes. that same thing we're talking about. Okay. okay Sometimes Stevens Hill Road, you just don't know where everything is. It's just well, long. It's very popular place in States. So, well, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, please, go right ahead. Yeah, so he's making a lot here. There's that guy's property. His house is here, then we're selling. And then this lot here is taking all this land. And where's the easement? This is just an easement to have access back to the pond. 
So this was the lot in question, which we talked about the plan. Backlog of Quincy's so on his house, the house, the his house is here. Mm -hmm. He's making another lot that goes here, no, and then this guy's here is going back there. They're going to put an easement that goes from there along the side of this over to the pond. So basically, from the road, right? To there so Stephen's house is going to be on this side. So yeah, so it's going to be on. If Stephen, if you're looking at, if you're looking at, if you're on. Driving down Stevens Hill. Right, and you're looking at the house, Stevens house there on the left because you're going north. Yeah. The easement's going to be on that side. Yes, correct. Right between the property line and the ponds right there. You're yes. going right down on the side of the property line there. Yeah. Yep. It's a huge piece of property, so. Mm -hmm. No parking spaces or anything on the other side of the road. Just. Can we put a beach there? The pond. It's such a critical site. Um, we're not going to really encourage recreation or passive. Well, the owners of the property can continue to use you know, passive recreation on that easement as they, as they wish. So it's going to stay with the is Stevens house. You just got an easement on that, that Correct. said property. For you to have proper act for the conservation of the access to go down over their property. And this protects the low pass in perpetuity if the ownership happens to change. And can the general, with that easement, the general public can access that too? No. They probably could, but it's <coughs> encouraged because the area is so sensitive. Mm -hmm. Very sensitive. Right, because it's, I mean, it's adjacent to a critical wetland. So. You're not making this a recreation area? No. No. So there's no trails, no nothing, no, just, nothing. just for monitoring purposes. Yeah. But we wanted to bring you folks in on the conversation. <coughs> um, Cheryl and I worked this afternoon on cleaning up a conservation easement document that Mr. Belzoni had sent along to us, asking us to edit it um, that would be appropriate for the park. So it's a work in progress. But we thought since he didn't have a lot of the tonight, we might get up to speed. And at some point in time, we'll, we'll come back and ask for approval of these funds out of the conservation fund. No, we will have some hearing on that. Right. So we're expecting to pay some funds for this easement that's pretty much property that can't be used for anything. Correct. So, what's the point of us paying any money for it? Because, because it protects it's the purpose it of the conservation. Okay. So, how, with the current laws in place, how is it not protected right now? It is protected at the moment, but if ownership changes or the wish of the present owners changes, and taking it out of current use. Okay, if they take it out of current use, it's a wetland, and what can they do? Skate on it, uh, snowmobile oh, So is skating going to <clears throat> impact whatever it, you're trying to protect? It might. This just keeps I, it protected and isolated from mm -hmm. human impact. I, I understand that. I'm just thinking about financially, what are we getting here <clears throat> financially for for this piece of property that's going to be no use to anybody other than it's protected. We're getting stewardship. We're stewardship. And how much? And how much is this? Um, maybe in the ballpark of seventy-five to pay for the document um, to be written up and, and approved. That usually runs about fifteen to twenty. For paying for the uh, survey that has to be done on the perimeter and also to. Uh, Define this area. It seems awfully expensive to me for. <laughs> it's six acres, right? <coughs> it's eight acres. Eight, eight, eight acres. acres. Okay, eight to ten acres. Well, plus eight acres that <coughs> is plus the basically. That allows for entrance. I mean, it's not a bad price because I mean, again, if you can't build on it, but you can't build on it anyway. You know, it's a one it's a two acre lot in town selling pond, for one hundred twenty five thousand. Right? How big so. is the pond? Two acres. How big is the pond? Right. I mean, so for. How big is the pond? It's pretty big. 
five or six acres? I was going to say it's so, somewhere no, it's way bigger than that. But, so, but the fence yeah, area right. around it is also very important to wildlife. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, critical so, species have been identified there. Does Josh own it now, or is that his own? No, no, they moved out of town. Right. Yeah, so, he so he's going to develop it. He's also going to cut off one additional lot to the okay. And I don't know if I'm speaking out of town, but he might have another buyer for the back area. That intends to keep it as conservation. Yeah, the deal there was they were speaking of that when they came in front of the planning board. Nothing was set and finalized because we haven't gave him, we didn't finish giving an approval for that. Did we give him full approval for that? Yeah, so. So this meeting is just to bring you into the Open a conversation. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. You know where we are. And, uh, I mean, it's, it seems like a lot of money for a non buildable property that. <laughs> but that's the purpose of the reservation. Well, I understand that, yeah. but it's like why it's already there. It's a, you know, you can't build on the pond. <coughs> that's six of the eight acres. You know, so it's a pathway to this pond that. You know, you have to have setbacks, so he can't build there anyway. So this is a win-win deal for Falzon. Okay. But, this but, part, it, but part of it too is that all right. So you can build up to a setback, but then that <coughs> gets developed, and now you've been infringed upon pathways, etc., for upland support that animals need. Um, they can't just have the wetland, and they can't just have a pond. They've got to have some place that's upland and able to move through that. You're going to have turtles nesting. They're not nesting in the wetland, they're nesting in dry land. So it's the supportive habitat along with that. All right, do you have your studies done for this to support that? The studies done for what? To support that you need you what, need, you know. Hampshire, the Hampshire like, Fishing Game has right. identified you have, this property as critical wetland. The okay. maps are available online. Okay, because it would have been nice to actually see them here. You, you know, bring them with us <laughs> when we bring this up for, for a hearing. <laughs> This is yep, just to right. get you in the loop for this. And <coughs> New Hampshire Heritage Bureau also has documented on rare objects we see mm -hmm. in the Pond area. That's another resource that we'll be bringing in. Yeah, I'm, I'm not opposed to protecting the land, but there's laws about setbacks and things like that that already do protection. That, you know, I'd be happy for Mr. Falzon to say, here, you can have this easement at no cost because that's the right thing to do. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I know. I know it's not going to happen. But he's basically he's looking for a bunch of money for a property he can't develop anyway. He, he, he could arrange a subdivision. Uh, <coughs> He, he could so try or whatever. Right. Out, he can. Out. He's yeah. on one house lot. Well, up close to the road. But if that lot also stays with the other people, I mean, they could take that upland area there, which is dry, mm -hmm. and they could be putting their own barn up there. They could put a three stall. I mean, they could be yeah, doing. Yeah, they could be doing something else with the land that might not be a livable house, but they could be cutting the trees. They could be with your own land. You can pretty much. Do nuts unless you're actually infringing, actually on the wetlands part, but mm -hmm. they're protecting all that upland that's also coming from the road down. Because he couldn't do a lot because you, right, need, well, you need 200 feet of frontage yeah. unless you go through zoning in order to get the, right. the 100 feet, but the zoning board might give you that anyway, so it's better off that we protect it at, just so we don't have the 100. At is this the, point, I'm not sure what has to be protected yet. So. Is the that 8 to 10 acres <clears throat> land or pond? Land. It's all land. Oh, okay. So, because the, the so pond itself is 27 acres, but I'm trying to figure out exactly Quincy Pond by the state is 27 acres oh, in size. But it does not include the supporting fen? <clears throat> no. I was just curious what you're referring to. It's, it's land, not, not the pond. So it's okay. eight acres of land doesn't include the pond. The pond's not part of that land. Nor the wetland, really. It's all okay. So then that keeps changing the story mm -hmm. better because now you're protecting, you're talking about purchasing, quote, buildable land and not purchasing wetland, which was right. not buildable. Right. Correct. 
Okay, so then now you're starting to change the story to John a little bit. Right. Right. Exactly. Before you were talking about buying water, which no, couldn't be built no, upon. No, we said buying the support of upland from. Okay. It wasn't perceived that way by the right. board. Definitely. <laughs> Clarification always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No worries. I mean, and that's what the fund of the money is for what they're supposed to be doing with the money is. Well, I, I know what it's for. Right. Sometimes I just say it out so everybody else knows what's in TV land, so. Right. But additionally, it also gives us the opportunity and the invitation to inspect <coughs> this every year to make sure everybody's in compliance. That is our charge. And so this will be obviously mapped out better with the proposed land yeah. once you. Yep. All right. Right, Mr. Pazzo will be doing a, a survey. That done. Is he charging you guys for that? The, whatever, the, the approximately, you know, seventy-five thousand would take money from that to cover his survey. Right. So that's just the seventy-five is all all the all you give, and he's going to take care of meat bounds, everything for the property to show where it is, and everything like that. The put lot of record put up sign. Legal documentation. That all comes out of the seventy-five that you're giving him. So there's no more money out the coming out from you guys from that. That's so he is taking some. I mean, it's not going to break his bank by any means, but it's still something that's nice. So. And, and usually something like the survey and, and documentation and filing that and, and registering the deed and all that kind of stuff. Anywhere from twenty-five to yeah. thirty-five thousand. I don't think he's oh, yeah. making big bucks. No. And he was very generous in offering this opportunity. Any other questions? Well, okay. As this moves further along, we have the additional documentation and go back for public access. When do you think that'll be? Do you have an idea, or is that going to be like in the springtime, or or you think it's going to be done before the winter? Maybe even earlier. Okay. Maybe even earlier. Hard, hard to say. Maybe February or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, there's probably going to be at least at least a month away. Yeah, but then you got the holidays in December, so that you're gonna, if you don't get it, yeah. I mean, if you're not ready to go now, on the 18th, yeah. you ain't gonna be ready to go with two weeks yeah. from there to go. So, it's, it sounds like more. It's gonna be a January project or so, or at the earliest. So, yeah, that's cool. Um, something people might want to be from, but it's up to you is to, well, we'll find out what the funding is, but is there anything else that's going on that, since we have the Conservation Commission in front of us that we should, and are there projects or anything that are? We might have some down the line. We're about to hear a couple of possible easements on town. Yeah. 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 Well, it's always been a concern of mine. I'll speak this as myself, <coughs> but the amount of money that the conservation has that we are spending it on the right things and doing it at a time of way to protect the land instead of just taking the money from the current use that people are putting in right. and that we are putting it back into the town in a timely yeah. fashion to get that land before that's it does get developed. And as, as you know, the history with this, John, is that we've, you know, we've had other projects that have come along and things have fallen mm -hmm. out. Mm-hmm. So, not for, not for lack of Nope. Use it for the projects that we're supposed to be for. Well, it's just the fund grows. It's just something to be aware of. But people, if they see your fund at $300,000 and ask, okay. why aren't you spending it or what it's just sitting there for, yeah. this is a concern for people to be, I understand. But in this day and age, when somebody sees a large sum of town money, they want to know what you're doing with it. Mm -hmm. So to be aware that projects are coming up, it's in the, uh, just to keep people's minds open to where it's going and what you guys are doing, you know, it's just more educational. So when you come back in front of us, if we do this, you know, people might be asking, you got 75 going here, what are you doing with the rest of the money? Yep. So I'm sure it's grown. Hopefully by that point, 
Yeah. Yeah, or just some of, so people are aware of projects that are going on with what you guys are doing. You know, it's taxpayer money, so it's kind of just, we just want to make sure people know it's, I know you guys are doing, in my opinion, what you're supposed to be, so, but you're not just appeasing me, so. <clears throat> Anybody have any more questions for them? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well, very long. Now we're back to budget. Those are the, um, I thought the ones I gave you were just the, the assessing ones. Did I give you another one? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're not there on those yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. No, it was just these. Those are the assessing ones. So how do you guys want to proceed on going over the budget, the line items? Do you guys, um, I looked at it today extensively. Do you want to talk about each department? Um, how is this going to break? I saw this year. That's um, tax cap calculation based on what appropriations were approved and which are pretty much our warrant articles plus the default budget using our Revised estimated revenues that were used to file the MS 434 in September of this year um, to come up with a net amount to be raised by taxation. And then we did the 4% calculation because we cannot exceed, the Budget Committee cannot recommend a budget that exceeds 4% over the amount to be raised by taxation in the prior year. So um, <clears throat> I guess I just summarized that document in a few sentences there. Um, if we're looking at it based on that, we have approximately $117,157 to increase by, and that would include our operating budget and all proposed warrant articles, which we're still compiling and probably will be doing for the next couple of weeks. Right. And um, if we do a road warrant article, which is normally couple hundred thousand yes so we're already short <laughs> correct but we knew that because we were right, right, we were short going into the default budget I mean um, so Tim actually did this calculation and then I just kind of added the pull the bullet points as to where the figures come from um, so he put a little side note that the total appropriations for the warrant articles that were approved plus the default budget were already $385,000 less than we had expended in 2023 for the operating budget alone. No, the operating budget and, and warrant. the warrant articles. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so we were already in that shortfall and then we had several warrant articles that failed that we don't get to add into the calculation. And so I, and the reason why we had talked about this at the last meeting is like, I think if we're going to be talking about warrant articles in the operating budget, we need to know kind of what we're looking at for a dollar amount. <coughs> and if you look at these warrant articles that typically are funded each year, like the police tech, the ambulance, which I know <coughs> has revenue coming in to replace it, mm -hmm. the fire vehicle, and then um, social services, which is a new one that we put on last year. Um, I mean, those four alone. $175,000. Right. Excuse me? <laughs> There's the, those four warrant articles that are normally, yeah. uh, well, the new one was the social services, but the total is $175,000 for those four. That's the police tech. The ambulance is a special revenue fund, so it's, yeah, it's offset. Um, the fire vehicle SC, SCBA, capital reserve fund, um, the built, the highway truck reserve, invasive species, and then. So is that the amount we did raise by taxation last year? The two million, 
nine hundred thousand. Yes. Yes. We'll have that figure finalized when we set the tax rate. <laughs> but yes, that would be because it's your total appropriations less your revenues. So we know the appropriations. To... We we don't know is the final revenue number. Right, and I guess that's just the heart. Like, it would seem that we total appropriations for twenty twenty four. But it's amount raised by taxation. I'm like, why are we not four percent above? that number but then we're putting in the revenues and then the taxation number it's even yeah it's only four percent of the taxation which is only what two percent on the actual budget not even total because it's actually only half of it was raised by taxation of what we did in 24 and the other half is revenue That number just seems super small. Yeah, it's... This is how we did it last year. Yeah, I know. This is how it was supposed to be done. It just wasn't done this way. It was always it was always the prior <coughs> year or two years. It was done four percent of the budget. Now right. This is the way the law correct is clarified to correct. prescribe. Yes. No, I'm just trying. And it's, to... it's always said the tax cap is based on the amount to be raised by taxation, but they they did some clarification. Correct. So I'm just going to read the RSA just so we have it out there. Um, the tax cap shall either be a fixed dollar amount or a fixed percentage, in our case, fixed percentage at 4%, to be applied to the amount of local taxes raised by the town or district for the prior fiscal year as reported to the Department of Revenue Administration subject to adjustment as provided in paragraph 1A or 1B. Um, so that is the essentially the amount that we use to set our tax rate in the fall. This is what we have to put here. So it shouldn't matter what revenues are. <coughs> it, of course, it does. See with this budget, because the this amount to be raised to by taxation here. is your appropriation less any offsetting no, revenues. We've already submitted that to them, though, right? No, we can't. I'm just saying, though. But is that how we came up with? It? We've already submitted what to whom? The amount that was to be raised by taxation. Yes. So the, in the reports that we have to file with the Department of Revenue through periodically, like after the town voting takes place, we file the MS-2, which is a summary of appropriations as voted. Mm -hmm. And then in the fall, we give them a revise. We, we estimate our revenues when we're setting the operating budget. <coughs> and based on fluctuations throughout the year, we have an opportunity to revise those in the fall. So we take that, um, the appropriations as voted, and then the revised estimate of revenues. And that's what's used to calculate the tax. Okay. 117157 dollars mm -hmm. is the total amount between the operating budget and all Warren articles that we have to work with above and beyond what was spent for last for 2024. The default. Up. Four four percent equates to one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. That's over what we have worked with in 2024, okay, right. so which was the our, default budget, right? And six hundred thousand dollars more in articles, of right? Mail. So our proposed budget, including warrant articles, can only be that hundred and seventeen thousand greater than what we. Yeah. But if we and hold on, if if this past year. We had $100,000 for the fire vehicle. We, that 117 is just greater than what we did last year. So we should still be default budget plus 600,000 and then, then in only an additional 117,000 above. So like we should be able to fund everything we did in 2024, $4.8 million line item across of these. And then 117 just goes to increase salaries or something like that, but it shouldn't be we only have so the police tech ambulance everything else is already right in they, there but right? we're missing the huge piece that we have no money for road reconstruction right. road which reconstruction. was in the budget the budget but that, but the default failed. budget had three hundred thousand dollars had twenty five thousand dollars twenty five thousand the warrant article failed 
the Warren article failed, but I we had we um, moved it all out. Default what? budget had three hundred thousand no. in it. We we yes. line itemed it. The default budget had three hundred thousand in it. <laughs> three hundred thousand yes. is in the default budget. Yes. Okay. And you, typically, we have had a additional three hundred thousand dollar wire to multiple years ago. Failed. Not in there. Our default budget, which we had to scrape that out of and move it to various locations because we needed to, to to survive. So I get that. But the default line item, Warren articles as passed. A road maintenance should stay at 300. But it's not it. We ended up, that default budget number, we ended up taking that 300 and spreading it to the wind. So it, it's not there. But we did have it in there. But everything that we did all these warrant articles should technically I mean we're not going to be doing a ballot machine again no and we're not gonna be doing the gym floor again we hope right. correct we're not going to be doing additional demolition on the rear community center because we've done that now it's going to be whatever we're going to do with the space mm -hmm. correct so there's 82,500 off the top correct that we can simply correct. eliminate kind of almost wouldn't that 82,000 be able to go back into your 117 number to be roughly two That's, yeah or it's good I think you're gonna have your what we need to build is a yes. warrant article for the roads and, I, and I'm okay with that yeah. but I'm just saying like you're like we only have 117 and then you were mentioning the items up here I'm like but we did that last year so right my understanding is we should be able to do all of these numbers plus Four percent of the taxable raised amount, which is only 117. Right. It's not four percent on the 5.4 million, which would be two hundred thousand dollars. It's five percent, uh, four percent, excuse me, of the 2.9 million dollars, which is 117. But in extra, so the, there is some. It is very doomy and gloomy. It's not like the end of the world, I think. But a lot of these Warren articles should still be able to go as funded. We're going to scrap the ones we don't need. And then we can look at how we line by lined last year to make it into the default budget this year and fluff up a few areas. But I mean, this also tells me it might be a short budget meeting season where you just kind of like, this is all there is, guys. I mean, well, we got to do base salaries and we got to do this. And there's not going to well, be a lot of Well, the bottom line is they can only, so it's the budget committee's budget that goes before the voters. So they can only recommend an amount that does not exceed that 4%. It might be a matter of items go on without a recommendation of the budget committee simply because they can't, they're bound. Correct. But whether or not that, that article still gets put out to the voters to decide whether it carries on a deliberative session, that, so, that's going to be the question. Somebody shows up deliberative and throws out an additional thing, that's what they do. Or if there's a town sponsored one at deliberative, that's separate. But I just wanted to make sure I understood the numbers. Like, yeah. We so funded for, for five million, yeah. right. for five point four million, and then I, I get right. the additional. We should be able to do a default budget value and most of these warrant articles and then move forward a little bit. And so I just yeah, when when you were first start talking to me, can you <coughs> Okay. I'm sorry. I've looked at this a few times. So All this is very it. helpful and I'm not gonna yeah, I was but I'm like, wait a second, we've already had this money. <laughs> but I, I guess to my, my, my point is, is I think before we, we need to look at the budget, obviously, and I don't think we do, but we need to figure out how much money we're talking about because we can go through the budget and say, yeah, we want to, you know, nix this and nix that and increase this. But then we, can be, then we can't wait and then get to the Warren articles and say, oh, okay, so now we have nothing to work with in the Warren articles. Mm -hmm. So I think right. we have to be looking at the big that's, picture the that's whole time. That's kind of why I started with the 117,000, which normally we have a warrant article for road reconstruction that we can't have it for 200,000 or whatever because we don't have that. Right. So those three warrant articles, it's 84,500 for the gym floor, the back of the building renovation, and the ballot machine. Yeah. So don't need those three. That's 84500 mm -hmm. And then the building maintenance reserve fund is, it was 150000 What are we down to in that right now? I know we just um, put a grand on that, a 40 grand on that. You can ask me that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. But anyway, we'll get back to you on that. we wanted to start funding that again, so we might have to eliminate 
you know, $75,000 from that, that gives you about $150,000 to work towards the roads. So we should actually go through and prioritize what our standard warrant article is going to be and then go to the budget afterwards. And start I think that's what there. makes sense. Yeah. Because but then we'll we're, know, okay. We're this. in a time crunch, though, because we have to move concurrently with the budget committee. So the budget committee is going to be looking for a draft budget from you on Thursday, which is essentially this doc document as proposed. But then you might still be doing some trimming over the next couple of weeks. I mean, we're trimming until January last yes. year. So. Not to say I want to drag it out that long, I but I don't think we, yeah, I don't know. So how would you guys like to, I'll let you speak for one second, but just how do you guys want to proceed tonight? Do you want to go through and start trimming some stuff out of the, of our line items here so that we can have this for the budget committee, knowing what we have to do with the warrant articles, even though I think it would be better if we, if we set aside what we need for warrant articles and then went to here. But there was items I saw in here where I know I could take another grand off here, two grand off here, or do stuff like this in order to drop this one down X amount of dollars just from looking at it today. So I think if we roughly start with the Warren articles to give us an amount of money that we're working with there, and then we kind of work back into the budget. I, I think that makes the most sense because then some of the Warren articles we may want to pull back into the budget. Right. Because it doesn't matter and it's just... We've, yeah, we've made it clearer now. Right. So like the social services one, we can, we were pulling it out. Mm -hmm. Right. We can just we'll put, put it back in. in. Right. We just make it simpler. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Is Wait a second. No, out? hold on. Huh? Right. Well, for, just a quick, since it's only us, you three and the things, what's your quick suggest? Or, <laughs> quick I, skip. We're not going to do it. No. no huge details here. I, I, I don't quite understand the 4% when you go to when the budget committee creates the budget goes to deliberative session and the townspeople can vote up and down however it goes mm -hmm. I'm assuming the four percent thing kind of ends at the deliberative session yes correct so the selectmen do have the capability of changing line items and articles at that point in time mm -hmm. also from the floor from the as a citizen right once we've signed what the propose is that we can't be like oh, okay, okay now we're going to change it what we've submitted that to the the townspeople and then at the meeting they can yeah. make all yeah. the changes they want to make at that at point. the meeting we have to have a budget that's four percent or less yeah i, I heard the, thing that the budget committee has to do it and then i thought okay. well it's the budget well, committee's budget that gets right. presented right, it gets right. Presented. <clears throat> okay. and that's what the the rsa reads is that the budget committee cannot recommend just so it's not really us, it's the budget right. committee that can't recommend that. <coughs> just for clarity, Ellen, what is that RSA so that people who are maybe oh, watching sure. it know? Um, RSA 5 dash b on the local tax cap. Okay, John, my, my question, John? Yeah. Uh, when you say line item and loan article, are they totally put together? Is that, is that the town budget? You include both in the budget. Yeah, we have to. This is the general operating budget. The general operating These budget is a warrant of its own. For the bigger spending projects that we need, the highway, you but know, that they all have to come together to meet the 4%. Thank you. So, so that's what we're. It's Peter Paul and stuff like that. Right. There's going to be changes that have to be made everywhere in order to get there. That's what Thank we're you. talking about right now. Thank you. Yeah, since we'll go to the warrant articles, we'll start off with the big elephant, I think, on this one here is. The, the road reconstruction. That's a number we got to talk right now. What do we think? Should that be 150? Should that be 125? Where's the number that we think that we're going to be? So Steve had been looking at Lucas Pond and one other road. Like, does he have a quote? So we can just say, he, a quote, it's for to fix this road instead of saying, right. we hope to fix these roads. Yeah, no, you're making a great point, Matt. If, if we at least have a thing. He was going to pull together the mileage of that as well as just finishing the small section that's left of Deerfield to get from Fundy Cove to Stevens Hill. And then also, it was Lucas Pond Road that, and then potentially work towards maybe paving some of those approaches onto the intersections for the dirt roads. Mm -hmm. So I think he has to get the um, 
total eight miles to get that calculation. The approach is what you're talking about is on the dirt roads, the fact that making the pavement go in 10 or 15 feet so the better for grading and right. plowing yeah. purposes. Because right. there's always big ditches and yeah. stuff because yeah, people peel it out, they make it all ruts and stuff, yeah. If oh, there's a car coming. Peel out faster, make more. Right. If it's at least paved. Um, that met with quite a bit of opposition the last year. It did. They and I don't so think... it might be better, to personal maybe, opinion. To put no, this is what we're talking about, Steve. Say it. Separate, separate <laughs> warrant articles. That would make more sense to me. Yep. And not put it in as towards that... Right. right. I, so we could have we can have reconstruction of um, what did you call them the end things? The approaches. The approaches. X dollars. Uh, Deerfield Road finish. X dollars. You know, separate warrant articles. Right. Uh, Lucas Pond Road. X. No, I don't. Again, I disagree with doing it that way because then you're actually pinpointing people that say. You know, I live on this side of town. What do I care about Lucas Farm? No, let's not do it. If we bundle it all together, then people can't be subjective of, we can tell them that these are the projects. Well, the other piece of that Warren article, the wording has, you know, there might be something, that the need might arise between now and next spring and where then, he has to completely do another road because of an emergency right. or what oh. have you. So it, it still enables it's him the, as wording. need, yeah, as priority. Keep that wording. But if we specifically warn article for a single road, then that might be different than putting it as a bundle. We don't want to make the same mistake we did last year and bundle it all together. What no. we, because that was a big mistake. I mean, maybe putting Lucas Pond and Deerfield Road together in one for road construction, but we're not putting a six hundred thousand dollar warrant out. It's not. I happening. understand that. But <laughs> actually, <laughs> the it's going to be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars ish, or it's not happening. Like so, I. We may be able to separate it out, but it's going to be pretty small anyway. Yeah, that I it's, know. and it should be stated when we write the warrant article that stating the fact that this is for designed for these, but it's also for if something comes up, right? Well, it's yeah. available yeah. and it's there. We, so we we're not just want to lose that word. Yeah, it's right. we want to make sure that it still stays because it is broad. Right. We're not, I and mean, we have a goal, but mm -hmm. if something happens, we want to make sure that we have that. The money set aside for you know if something happened on a different one. Got so it. so we kind of need Steve for estimates on that stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. We can, I I think, for numbers' sake, we can saying about one hundred and fifty thousand because I don't what was it one hundred and four hundred and forty thousand finished most of Deerfield up to where it stopped and did that Highland and Highland. So if you think about roughly how long Lucas Pond is to the town line and roughly what's left. Let's just say 150 is probably going to get us. That? It's probably going to get us pretty close to that. And we're also behind the eight ball two of money that we never that didn't go through the past couple of years. That even if there is a little excess money in there, that I'm sure there's a way that we can try to update where we're, we fell behind. Mm -hmm. The the 300, you know, the the money we put in there, that was also for other projects that came up. You know, so there's things on the <coughs> list there that could be paid for that we could be spending some of that ex if we have extra money, you know, an extra $20,000 or something in there. Because again, we're, if we do it as a general road maintenance, right? There might be another road that might need something done that might be 20 grand oh, for right, us to right. do. Oh, yeah, so no, we can gotcha. go put that yes, spend it yes, on there too. Gotcha. Right. You know, because there's, there's roads and stuff that we have it's, over the without having that, you know, the default budget last year, you know, the year before we had to take a major cut off it. Right. I don't so think some projects got a little behind. I don't think 150 is going to fix I'm all our problems, sure. but I'm not sure it's not going to cover gonna those two roads. Right. I was I don't thinking think. it probably wouldn't either, because I mean, if we spent how much this year? If you're going to go Lucas Pond all the way to the town line, that's probably that's, close to that alone. Yeah, because how long? I mean, it's got to be like the same length as Deerfield piece of the town line, right? Or no. Mm -hmm. We had we had 142 533 encumbered from 2023, and then we had the twenty five thousand dollars that was in the operating budget. They did quite a stretch of Deerfield. Mm -hmm. The stretch of Lucas Pond is technically not that long. It just goes right. I, I'm not sure where the town line is there. So it's quite a ways town, isn't it? Oh, it, it isn't it like right past Deer Dearborn Deer. 
I thought it was Rira. Devonshire. 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 Is it just well, Devonshire's on that. Just past Devonshire, and then it ends. Because the road gets much nicer after that. Because <laughs> that paving company landed the road correctly. Are you, you going to dig it up and, and repave it? They would have to do the same thing that they did on Deerfield. Um, Where they just mill the top layer, and then... <laughs> they just till, they just of the two layer road they milled the top layer off and then they reapplied it correctly oh, okay. All right. okay. so it, it doesn't need to be reconstructed no 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 just that top layer and for anybody listening what well, we so did the, top layer's gone on that road. the what they did take off a of deerfield was repurposed at the town dump to fill out the town recycling center uh, like in front of the dumpsters and stuff like that and level off some edging so Plus the shoulders, I think. Report, right, shoulders and stuff. Do you feel like a pile down? The looking at your budget here that you've helped present for us, the requests are that you put in? The budget requests are either as presented by the department head or what I've put in for plug figures for all the other ones. Yeah, it's not that long. No, it's like three miles. It's only three miles. Lucas one. Yeah. Right. So maybe... Okay. That's almost more, but I don't know. I um, the areas where we are on your budget request, where we're under, where we're spending on this year, mm -hmm. I only see like one or two. So, like the conference dues, it's like a thousand dollars. We've already spent over what you're requesting. You think fifty-seven is going to cover it? So before we get um, there, I'm just asking a quick one for Mike. Okay. Go ahead. You're doing math. So do we just want to start with saying it's roughly $160,000 if we took out $75,000 from the building maintenance reserve fund, bringing that ballot warrant article down to 75000 and then um, the other three warrant articles, the gym floor, back of building reno, <clears throat> and the ballot machine, the total there would then be one fifty nine five hundred. So roughly $160,000 that we could start with for the road mm -hmm. warrant article. And then we move, are we in agreement that we want to move social services back into the operating budget? That's a net zero impact. Right, I think correct. it makes sense. Okay. So then that brings us to the $117,000 we potentially have to work with with an increase over the default budget from 2023 is what we mm -hmm. could go with. Or 2024, I'm sorry. And right now, it's $215,826 over what you're looking at, the operating budget. This, this per budget requested? Right. Why do we want to, why do you want to, I'll talk about that right now, the social service line. What? You want to put that back into the, the line items of the budget? Yeah, I think it's... It didn't less. make, I mean, it, it's kind of an... It's no impact less things for people to get worked up over on a ballot you know it, it's just a something we could take off the ballot as a separate item it passed overwhelmingly last year right I mean I think it would I think it's safe either way but <laughs> if you want to leave it as a warning article I don't really care just I mean, Last time we had to go through and like read. Everything all here is open different. for discussion, so, so that's why we're so talking about. It. And, had to like read honestly, everything where it went down. If we can take <laughs> items off the ballot, it costs us less for programming. Make it a page less. And printing less pages. Right. Right. Exactly. Well, it costs us less for elections. Less frustration for the voters. Less, too. Right. Less frustration. The more less... they have to read through, the mm -hmm. more disconnected they'll be. Yep. Depends on the year. Are they happy and voting yes on everything because they just done, or are they voting no on everything because they're pissed off that we give them so much to read? <clears throat> I don't feel overly strongly one way or the other. We had moved it out because again we were still learning the tax cap halfway through the cycle because I don't think we would have done half of the things we did. It was just extra labor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That it, that it could have just been a line item thing we did later on. Thank you. <clears throat> um, 
Tim, to your point, you're saying that mm, that's scribbled out on the back. I didn't. What's that? Yeah, ignore what's scribbled out. That was something that shouldn't have carried forward on here. So. That was just some, it was on my spreadsheet. You're, you're saying that 25 budget request as presented are $215,826. 215826 $215,826 dollars higher than 2024 default. Okay. So you're saying right now we would have to do the 215 minus the approximate 117 that we have. That's the gap that we have to kind of make the cuts to or the 215 is over the right now it's presented it's over so you we need to cut at least $90,000 out of the operating budget okay. if we wanted to leave the warrant articles as we just discussed. Okay. Is that leaving Social Security's in or out? It doesn't. It's a net zero. Yeah, I mean, we could add them back in. That does not include adding those back in. Because if we present it as a Warren article, it's the same money that... It's still part of the no, function. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, technically, I mean, I don't understand where we keep the Warren articles the way they are. You know, for the highway, the police, and stuff like that. But, again, it's... Coming in the end, it's all the same. It is. You could throw them all on this here. It's called a line item, and it'd still be the and no worn articles. As long as this part came to four percent, uh, correct, know, right? So the, the way that the police cruiser is in the budget, whereas the, the fire truck, is obviously, a slightly more expensive piece of equipment. Right, it, but that has to say warrant article because it's a special fund. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's what I mean. That again, right? There are certain so. things that have to be done by separate warrant article, right? Which one specifically? So like the so the um, adding tag? to and adding or expending from any expendable trust fund or capital reserve fund. So ambulance, so police, fire, right? Police tech has to be truck, ambulance, fire, uh, building maintenance reserve, and <coughs> um, highway truck. Yeah. Those five. Um, and, and even the, the invasive spaces, species. Right, invasive species. That's an expendable trust fund. Right, but the boat inspections doesn't have to be correct. Or the social services. Yeah, because the boat inspections, that was, I think, in right, years past, it used, to be, it used to be in the budget. Right. Right. Well, seems like we kind of narrowed that down uh, over there, didn't we? You got to so, have the highway in, right? Right. So we'll have the highway one. Right. What? So we have to have that. Or warrant in. article, which is not listed here. Right. Unless we decide not to fund something <clears throat> this year. Yeah, but six warrant articles if we went to the town would be a nice. Right, like the boat inspections. I mean, like stuff like that, which you're just going to put it into the. I feel it's easy. Well, it should be into the operating budget. Correct. So that's. Again, I think that was pulled out in 2023 when the budget was done. Again, to cut down on the operating budget. Right, because right, we were doing yeah. it the exact op. Right. We weren't doing it. Right. So, Steve, to your point, no, it doesn't include the social services number, but that's a, it kind of doesn't matter because we're it including, right. It doesn't matter if it's in the operating budget or it's a separate No, budget. it doesn't. Right. <clears throat> Still money, though. Oh, yeah, no, no, we have to. It's real money. Yep. It's not play money. So do we want to start with page one of the operating budget and start? Well, since I think we have, so you're this will be clarified up in, for the budget meeting on Thursday. Mm hmm what we just talked about here. Well, they right. already went over it last week. Yeah. Okay, so we just want to present them. They're just going to look at this. So they want to look at the yeah, so Tuesday they, they heard some departments. Thursday they heard the rest. So they haven't seen this complete overview as of yet. That's what they're going to be reviewing this week with it's any amendments that we might make to it tonight before it gets there. Which realistically we might as well start making amendments because we're going to have to. Right. Where do we cap? It would be nice if we had the things on here that we don't really, like we really can't touch at all. Like budget or like it's a, it's a salary. So we can't be like, oh, we're going to 
cut this line item but at somebody's salary and then just look at the ones that we can move and mess with those so well I mean we can kind of talk about that as we go through all. yeah so you guys want to look at the uh, executive totals first mm -hmm. well, we'll look at executive. Yeah. Start that. so if we decide we want to put boat inspections back in it used to be in the Pawtuckaway Lake line which could be relabeled to boat inspections or whatever because that would just or Lake be Coast Lake Coast or whatever you want to call it that would be line 20 adding 5,000 yeah up oh, right there in the front That's what I see is maybe you can knock that down 500 bucks or right. something. Uh, yeah, I, I think we might be able to knock down postage, although it's going up again, but not for, like, letters. Only for, like... So. And the only reason why I would caution moving it too much is because it is going to be a revaluation year, so I don't so, know if there's going to be you know, appointment requests that need to go out. That's, that's a good point. That, mm -hmm. um, and maybe that needs to be considered as we look at, you know, fluctuations in years for things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much more posts it generates. But that could impact printing too, right? Yeah, paper. I mean, we have 5,000 plus parcels. That's going to be 10 reams of paper, so we're talking $35 for a case of paper. I think we're probably fine there. <laughs> toner. Don't forget the toner. Yes, the toner is expensive. Five cents per page, so sorry I underestimated. <clears throat> we were doing this last time, right? We're nitpicking the small stuff, but we need to find the bigger meat potatoes. Is there anything on yep. here that you know is fat that we can just get to the back side of the ribeye here and cut it off? Like... <laughs> Where's the ten thousand dollar one? Are we talking specifically about the executive budget, or are we talking overall? Overall, overall, overall yeah. In, instead of us sitting here trying to find twenty five dollars in an executive line item, is there one that we're well? Like, I'm fine with the executive the way it sits. So just let's move well, on I, to the next. I mean, one. like I can tell you items that were added back in there, and you know, one of them is um, our dues to Stratford Regional. That was fifty eight hundred dollars. I did put it back in there. Um, Sixty-eight hundred and fifty-six dollars. That would be line item eighty-nine. Did we? We didn't. Uh, we didn't. We surrendered the dues this year, which got, gave up our our voting rights. Um, ultimately, what it did was it it brought on an extra cost. We had to pay for our law books, the land use law books that come out yearly with all the legislative updates. Um, so now we have to pay for those publications. It's like twenty dollars a book. Um, I don't know what other impact to the planning board it had not being a dues paying member we still had Blair Haney from Stratford Regional being acting as our town planner right. um, and we were just paying for his services so at I don't, the a la carte rate correct and that would have been covered by would that have been covered by a dues or no or no no, so no it, it might have it might have been a discounted rate I don't know okay, what the so comparison we, is all right so there's um, a new line item here just before we go. I see the offsetting revenue tucking in here yes. and there. So for budgeting purposes, are we to acknowledge that? Or I know you said I just tried to plug in the estimated revenues and show you the line items that might be impacted. Like we might be so we can't expend without an appropriation authorizing us to do so. But I wanted to show you that there are some, some appropriations. We have to raise money towards advertising and postage costs for the planning board costs related to a specific application. But in turn, we're receiving a revenue. We're receiving that fee back from the applicant. So there is no burden on the taxpayer, but we still have to expend it even though we've got the revenue coming in. So I just wanted to show you certain areas where we have an offset so in this case we zeroed them out on like the budget committee went through and zeroed them out on the expenditure side but we didn't make a change on the revenue side so it was almost like we were 
Um, oh my God, I can't even think. <laughs> so basically, they're they're offsetting. Yes, exactly. It's, it's like so they're a wash. It, it costs a thousand dollars. We expect that we, we have a thousand dollars back to cover that. Okay. So that the that number is, the two should match. Right. So I just wanted to show you those specific areas where that is the case. So um, I plugged numbers back in because I don't think they should be zero figures. We're going to have an expenditure. Obviously, you'll see, um, let's take zoning postage, for example, 101. We had moved that line item for $500 down to 50 last year, but as of 11-8, we had already spent $715. Yes, we've received that in on the other side, so. Yeah, well, this should have been paid for by the applicants. Correct. Right. Exactly right. what but, I'm saying. So, which is why if you put the offsetting revenue <coughs> that matches that number, they just... You can see that there is a wash effect. need to make sure that we budget that revenue correctly mm -hmm. to <coughs> so we're going to zero out the, the annual dues annual dues well yeah i mean i mean i've been sitting on that board for a long time and it's 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 something that i i mean i know the benefit of being on that board right uh, i mean again i but we're on while we're under this tax <coughs> It's something where we've been successful doing everything else. As long as we can keep the planner, I mean, he's been vital. Uh, so, I mean, that's, if we had to take something out of there, that's what has to go, because I don't think, I think that, we need, the, we need the planner. For, for that much money? Or can we reduce the amount of meetings? Well, I was trying to last year, was I, you know, some of, he like, he didn't come to, he's not coming to any of our workshops, so we're not paying for any of that stuff. Okay. Uh, but he is coming when we're doing the major subdivisions. Where, where does the break even point fit with having membership versus, you know, that's. that's I, I guess as long as, like John is saying, as long as we have his service a la carte, you know, do we need a voting member or two at the table representing the town of Nottingham and Stratford Regional Planning Commission? Mm -hmm. that, that is the question. Um, the planner is actually on line 86. There's a separate line budgeted. So if we remove those dues, it's going to be the same impact of right. 2024, which was none. And that again, was an area that I did propose an increase just because we had budgeted or, or the default, we had reduced that line item down to 22,000. As of November, we had already expended 25,000. So tracking. We're, we're tracking forward to potentially spend 28000 in 2024. Are we going to have that caseload again in 2025? We don't know. But for budgeting purposes, you at least try to cover your expenditures for the year. And I think the planning, we, we again, probably could have, we probably could have kept that number at, at 22, but I think some of the meetings probably said he didn't need them, but. Well, you can see the caseload, but somebody's going to tell them not to come. Right. And somebody's going to do not to budge. Tell them not to come. Exactly. What's yeah? The membership, as far as I know, came into play when we had the USA Springs water thing and the regional impact. They right. Out with that. I think that. Was but a lot of the other stuff they're doing re for regional impacts, we're not in that category of. Right. But there is no 500 apart uh, apartment building moving into Nottingham. There is no. Happen to be at that point. At, for, for, right, yeah, that's probably the only I could think of major. <clears throat> yeah. Because then we have the, no subject, no town, no water, no transportation sometimes, but that's. We don't have public busing in Nottingham. We don't have anything like that that go on to, so. As long as we stay a bedroom community, we're. And we bought maybe our okay. books already, so. We're <laughs> Well, no, we they come out them. yearly. Yeah, we buy the books every year. Oh, they come in that yearly? Yeah. yeah. And then we turn around and throw year. them away. Yeah. They, they got to put their name on some bills. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, I guess, guess what? <laughs> that one. There you go. Which line was that? <clears throat> uh, that was line 80. Uh, 
The planner is 86. The dues are in line 89. So, it was, so of the 69, 66 in that line item, 68, 56 were the SRPC annual dues. The um, the balance of $110 was reserved for co conferences. If any of the planning board members want to attend the Office of Energy and Planning, I think you could put the planner back down to 25 instead of 28. Okay. Because um, even right now, we don't have any cases coming, any major subdivisions coming in front of us, and we haven't had any. <clears throat> Um, conceptual plans for anybody to come in from a major subdivision yet so there's a good chance that we could cut some of his services you know and again yeah, valuable, you guy, three valuable guy to year. have here very valuable very knowledgeable and again I'm not trying to say not to the planner but I think we can be a little more conservative this upcoming years for at least the first next six months Plus, you had a very new board this year, too. So. Oh, yeah, we had a brand, yeah. So It was critical to have them. So the dues and conferences needs to stay at 110, is that what you're saying? Um, that just gives the option if there if there was a new planning board member that maybe should go to that annual conference for training. I mean, that only covers one member, maybe two. But I, I would recommend leaving it in there. Well, we can take line 86 down three grand from 28 to 25. Secretary salary stay the same. Yes, so, so that's co that's combination planning and zoning for her office hours plus meeting attendance. Okay. I know we only spent fourteen so far. We get to that twenty. We just took eight thousand off that page. On line eighty-five. Nine thousand. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Yeah, but in twenty twenty-three, we expended. The dues Over themselves 20, are seven, so. and you took yeah. three thousand off the other one. Oh, right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. <laughs> gotcha. You, Keep you with the math over there. Does that mean you cut it? I'll just make the call. Cut it. <laughs> you should make it. Right. Yes. No. We're yeah. We're cutting the the Stratford regional planning. How much is that? Six thousand eight hundred and fifty-six dollars. And we just took three thousand dollars off the um, the planner's budget to make it twenty five instead of twenty eight. I mean, the budgets that we look at that are flat from you know, I mean, they're staying within their realms. The ones we got to look at are the ones that have the increases and see if they need to be there and then we can try to go back and cut the other people more but and why line 98 so much this year five hundred dollars no you're uh, saying what, what it's, 11, it's 11 so we we've expended eleven thousand six hundred and forty six and that's again one of those situations where if we have a case that either needs legal or engineering consultation or oversight mm -hmm. or what have you we have to expend it somewhere. We're receiving it back from the applicant either through their escrow that they've established at the time of conditional approval or for direct billing. So you're holding them at five, but are those things that should be put at one dollar? As long as we show a dollar in the revenue offsetting it. That's what I'm saying. Right. Whatever's in the expenditure column yeah. needs to mirror in the revenue column. Right, right. but if we did all these plug figures of yeah. five, I mean, if I just look on this page, it's other. it doesn't matter because then it comes off on the on the other side. Other side, so it makes a difference at the bottom line on the other end, right? No, no, because you're oh, you're because offsetting it by that same of, amount on the revenue side. So that's it's going to change. It's, it's going to reset this revenue line. Right, here. it's going to change that number. So if you're looking at the big picture, it makes no difference. Yeah, okay. as long as those two match, that's the important thing. It would only, yeah. Was I skipped? Did we talk about Stratford Regional Planning helping with the master plan? Was one of the points of why we want, why we need them? Probably. Wasn't that Probably part of our discussion the other day? That would be somebody. About hiring an individual. Sorry, but they didn't offer a service like that. They're, they've they offered offer. to start. Um, they're doing that housing opportunity grant funding to potentially update that section. Right. They offer those services, yes. but you don't have to be a member for that. Good. Okay. Well, because we have a line item here at 96, which is $1. Mm -hmm. Not saying I want to add things back in, but. 
you know, keep that on your radar of something that it needs to get done. And we keep pushing the thing off and off and off and off. So, so put it in. I'm just saying we're we're gonna again waste a lot of time trying to beat up flat line items where mm. if we go and look at other I just don't know what two grand will get you or three grand will get you or what for the Right. I mean you know, five hundred bucks on the town plan master plan line doesn't do anything. It's more just looking at the you know But again the whole master plan doesn't have to be updated, it's only certain sections. Lease is up a moderate Do we 3%. Add it as a reserve fund. But that's adding the cruiser back into the operating budget that we took out because we funded it by ARPA in 2020. Which is fine. 3% compared to the ones that jump. Like, why did Highway jump 11%? What's hiding in Highway? Um, again, he adopted a budget that he didn't set. He worked off of it, and then he just made sure that he was covering the expenditures, the actual expenditures that were made for this year. Because I'm, I was trying to look through here. I'm like, what is ten? Ten point four. Hired equipment and plowing. He he bumped that up because yep. that's following what we paid. Right. It was but under our full was, time salary is way down because oh. we didn't have a full time person. Right. right, and I thought our hired stuff should be able to go down this year because we bought a smaller truck, truck with and a we bought a sander. Correct. Then so that's one ta that's taking one hired truck off. Correct. Right. <clears throat> and obviously the highway is one of those ones it's it's hard to say, oh well we just won't do that. But I mean you have to plow and you have to plow and it it costs when it costs. But right. this right. line item's up ten percent. So I'm just saying that what what's in here more that needs to be looked at. But if we've taken one truck off is higher plowing than that plowing number could drop. Two twenty seven. I mean that that number's still huge too. We we were off. We we had did we have broken equipment or we didn't have full time staff at the beginning of the year? <laughs> For what the hired equipment? Yeah. We were on the assumption that with full staff, because the prior year we were running at half staff, that we wouldn't have to use as much hired equipment. But what they did, what the highway director did last year was he reduced the plow route from six hours, which was not advisable by our insurance company, down to a more feasible three-hour route. So that required, it, it required just as much subcontracted labor because we only have the four on the department plowing so if you're reducing their their route time by half somebody's picking up that other half and then where is would that higher that's uh, plowing it's like the greater that we're renting right now is that under hired equipment i'm just saying like which line is going to keep going up because we have a broken piece of equipment Is it like 229? Is that yes. where that one we would be going? Um, Most likely. Yeah. Yeah. And then if I look at this, where what was I just looking at? Mm, equipment and parts. Is that where the engine's coming out of, or where is that coming out of? I'm more just I would say at a, either that or um, the equipment maintenance line item 230. Yeah. So like mowing and vegetation control. I have a $10,000 invoice that I just received, so that will be expended fully. He wants to increase that because we're so far behind. Right. <sighs> Do we buy a mower? <laughs> no. He's, no. Oh, he's oh, you got to buy a tractor and a yeah. mower. Yes, it is one, but... And I think that's why the higher equipment piece is up too. So equipment parts is probably going to be pretty close to thirty-five by the time you drop another fifteen grand on there. Or actually, they'd be under equipment maintenance. Correct. Two thirty. Okay. So there's still room there. Yeah. 
and then we'll have the um, whatever the end result is on the grader that maintenance as well coming out of that now he said we have enough sand to last how long two years two years two so years for sand. so can we cut that to line 234 down to like 45 40 from 60,000 I think he'll make work whatever he has to work with right. Yeah, I mean, it gives him less material to work with to do gravel projects, and, right? Right. Right. Well, he, right. Because he's going to need. <clears throat> he has sand for winter. Winter. But, but the gravel is other. necessary to. I mean, some of the roads that he's grading, they're down to no material, so you have to add material to right. give him something to grade. Right. He's going to add. He's finally adding good material in instead of when mud seasons come. He's going to have to bring the gravel in to right, fix right. those. But we probably could cut like a ten grand off that mark, though. But with better drainage right. efforts, maybe we. I mean, yeah, be and in better shape. He, and he's out there doing work that has not been done in the fall on those roads. So I mean, it's moving that down to forty-five, you're still only at thirty-two. Right, right? we're only at thirty-two this year. So. I mean, well, I believe we should leave some money in there for the budget committee to cut. You know, let's, <laughs> do, let's not all do it for them. <laughs> They want to be. They want to be. You know, they want to look at it and take some numbers off it. So they just look at it and say, "Well, well you guys whether I do it job. tonight or I do it on Thursday night, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, same with fuel, right? Like fuel came way in. Did we we sign a contract? Uh, um, no, we. They're using primarily the um, cube. The cube. Right, but did and we sign a new price card. fitting? Up? We pay rack plus. Okay. So. Cool. I mean, I'm right. not going to try to jinx us with a month and a half. Right, but that's quite a jump in fuel. In 37, what we've already expended. Well, it's just, it's flat from 2024. I know. It's yeah, but full fuel prices are take... half of what they were right. when we were doing the budget last year. And, it could probably... and do we judge that they might go down? I don't, I don't say go down, up. but I don't know if 60 is the number when we haven't yeah, spent... Could, I, we could probably drop that to 45. If we drop that to 45, we're seeing the gravel to 45. That's, that's another $30,000. Right. Right. Exactly. That's huge. That's a lot of. <laughs> that's what my point was. I don't want to keep cutting $200 off somebody's paper. <laughs> Didn't make like sense. Postage and light bulbs. and. No, I, I agree that 45 and 45 makes good sense there. Okay, let's go with that. What are you cut? Reallocated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Advised differently for budgeting. Uh, sand. We are doing good with sand, gravel, and stone. We, we lower that down. And fuel, we're heavily budgeted, but based off the end of the year projection, we're still, we even with a couple of storms we got whacked within the last spring, we, we did okay. Unless that new chipper shredder, they plan on using ten thousand dollars worth of fuel in. But. Yeah. And if we shred enough material, we can put that in the road service. Right. <laughs> For mud season. <clears throat> I mean, and he did a big thing. He was, like I said, he was reusing that stuff they ripped off of Deerfield Road and fixed a bunch of stuff that we didn't pay for. So it's just reusing something that we were going to have to right. pay to truck away anyway. The, uh, the recycling center. Billings or whatever it's called. Did I say the wrong? Right. What's that? Then yeah. I just called the dump again. No, the recycling center. Yeah, the, the big area by all the that's, yeah, that's all filled saying. in. Yeah, he recycled that. He used it for um, the edges of the road, the shouldering material. He used where he could there, and then repurposed it up at the recycling center. And then, can you maybe get clarification from him on line two twenty seven, where there's a forty thousand dollar increase for hired equipment plowing? Is right. if we spend everything on part time salary and full time salary, then shouldn't that be lower right exactly that should be well that was another area when going back to his budget presentation he said he at least he increased those to cover at least what we had expected oh in this i'm year. sorry you would just explain that because he reduced the shifts time <laughs> right <laughs> as well so then the, the yeah, six hour route to a truck, three hour route with a new truck we should be able to reduce that by one truck he said correct so what's that what does the one truck off of that mean? Like, can he make that 200 even? 
That's fifteen I, I'm grand. Sure could, I'm sure we can get two hundred. Even we could probably go less than two hundred. Even. But I look at that as yes, we can probably reduce that, but we're going to pick it up in the part-time wage line, paying somebody to operate that truck. No, because we're full staffed. We are full staffed, but yeah, we that, have enough trucks for our full staff. This is an extra truck. Drivers, the intention for that truck was to pull on a so, part-time okay, so seasonal I, plow driver. But it's not going <clears> to <throat> cost us the truck. It's not going to cost us $155 an hour or whatever it may be for the subcontractor to do it. I mean, he bumped that up. It's going to be the hourly wage, wage of, you know, $20, $24 an hour. Right, which we already got <clears throat> 18000 in that line. Yeah. Which are all we're using that for is plowing. <clears throat> At least I would think that's all we use. Yeah, I mean, we did we did have part time staff working this summer to cover the fact that we hadn't backfilled the the full time, the fourth full time position. Right, but it's still trying now. to reduce the budget. Right. I'm good with taking another fifteen off of that. And I'm assuming that highway full time salary takes into consideration all. That should be the budget of every of everybody that Follow. was supposed to be right, there. Right. You plug in those numbers. Right? Yes. So that's yeah. the highway director plus four full time. Yeah. 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 That's. Yeah, that's a no touch line. Yeah, right. <laughs> if he can, I mean, it would seem to me that hiring equipment, maybe. That, that's when we can come back to, I guess. I we can come back to that. We'll, we'll save I that be, one. I would be easy to say 200000 even on that one. No, but we might, like he said, make the budget committee try to find something. Um, and then we should have better numbers as we come in for like equipment maintenance and all that stuff. I just feel I don't want to say there's a lot of fluff in here, but there's well, little. You never know when you're going to break another. A motor. Right. right. <clears throat> you never know what you're going to have for breakdowns. Um. Are we done with highway? Are we still on there? Um, I think I'm done with highway. Yeah. What about line 246, adding 10 grand to that line? I don't know what that is. That would be the um, solid waste or the recycling center salaries. <clears throat> to that set. So adding to it, I would be not opposed to that. You know, because we have three guys working right now. And if somebody takes a Saturday off in June, and we're busy going. We don't have anybody left over. I mean, we still got to, we should have a fourth person that's part time that's working in there just to cover shifts or something. But the way we have it lined with the budget now, we don't have the money to do that. So you're saying 84 or 93? 93, 10 grand. And then if it does give everybody a dollar raise over there, I wouldn't be opposed to that too. And that's just my opinion. Not opposed to it. <laughs> but yeah, what the hell? That is a yeah. What? Right. Not until after. <laughs> right. No races until after. <laughs> after town meeting. It was the first quarter. <laughs> Well, I mean, again, we still got to, I mean, that is, you, we talk about the highway department being a huge, you know, thing in this, our recycling center is a huge part of this town. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's an important piece. You know, I mean, if we're not going to, I mean. People need to get rid of their trash. And it's running really good right now. So there's still stuff that needs to be done, but. To adding some definitely a place to try to find efficiency the, the collection fees the trucking fees and stuff but overall yes over there it's it's running good and everything it's you want to keep the people that are there happy you want to bring on somebody else I mean it's not going away in any way so Scheduling them. 
in the process credit cards over there now. Have been resolved. No. No. Internet's not strong enough. Okay. So do we take that out? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to take it out. We have to find a solution. We've had IT look at it, and this. Yeah. They still need the World Wide Web over there. Dial up. <laughs> well, that's what it feels like right now over there. That's all so. I agree. No, I think it's worse. <laughs> Yeah, because if we can't get through it all. Yeah. You're on a nice And they, they have Comcast over there? Yes. Yeah. Is actually can they does go to anybody yes, offer Fid dialogue? Fidium is over there now. Are they? Yes. They have the fiber? Yeah. Okay. We can look into it. Because we have that. We're a mile from the mm -hmm. recycling center and it's it works well. I mean for the amount that we're Same. paying for Right, for something that doesn't work. Right. Okay. <laughs> We can't process a credit card. That's like a simple transaction. Simple bits, yeah. It's yeah, not. it's like nothing. I, I, it would be a simple, in a retail environment, yes, with our current credit card processor, which is Innerware, which is the same one that the, the town clerk's office uses. It's it, it's not quite as user-friendly as I would like it to be in, in that application, but you get what To your phone, you know, it's not a matter of just going in and swiping your card. You have to pull up the application on the computer. You have to put in what it is, and then you have to do the, the processing. And it's, yeah. hmm. Why did you put the uh, supplies for the highway department down from last year? That's $6,861. Are you talking about the... Um, Line 261. Um you're talking about for um, recycling not yeah yeah solid waste. Said highway. sorry solid waste my bad Too um, when I had originally started working on this budget we hadn't expended that much but obviously we have now where we're not recycling the recyclable bags mm -hmm. okay, so that's yeah. so that it, we have to find another supplier for the bags they're a lot of money but they have to be a certain mill they have to be a recyclable material in order for <coughs> The bales to be accepted so um, but yeah those are those are expensive so that obviously that third quarter expenditure hit and mm -hmm. so that seems like a seven thousand dollar line it item. should be a seven thousand dollar line but if I don't have enough to work with it'll incentivize me to find an alternative source <laughs> if there is one and then the, the big percentage increase for REC is just the note that you have uh, how we're kicking out on 1273. We're, we're just. We're trying to bring, so half of Bridget's salary, we tried to do it last year. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to bring it into the operating budget rather than. <clears throat> I honestly think her salary is more secure being out of the REC revolving fund. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably correct. Right. <clears throat> um, well, it's you know I I can't say I don't disagree, but you're right because I mean, it, it but she does. Right. I think the point of it though is that she's like a lot of the salaries that come out of the rec revolving fund are specific to a program. So you've got flag football, mm -hmm. there's registration fees for that, and then the the, the offset, summer camp, the mm -hmm. summer camp. I mean, what? the assistant rec director does is a lot more than just run seven programs or you know so I think the program having, coordinator <laughs> is in the rec revolving that makes sense because her job is to keep those programs running and the rent the fees coming in yeah but whereas the assistant director she's Courtney's left hand helping with the budgeting and the the liaison for the Talking department. Talking about security. Yes. <laughs> it just means nobody can go and drop the line item down because it's hidden from prying eyes what the rec revolving fund does. Money goes in, money right. comes out. It happens exactly. to be. It's definitely. Her salary comes out of a. It's just sad that it's got to come out of that. Yeah. I mean, that fund is supposed to be developed. She's a town. Other area. She's a town employee. Oh, yeah. So I would say if we can try to keep that, in my opinion, I'd like to try to keep that there and work around that if possible. <clears throat> well, um, 
just quickly on that note, why line item also includes town beach gate stipend? Yes. So we pay two what? gatekeepers four hundred dollars. Yeah, but why isn't that its own? Because it's a salary, or it's that. That's where that's the line item where all of her wages come. That four hundred dollars a year. It just seems like that would be at line two seventy eight for beach maintenance or something. Right, because like that. that's not a full time. Thing. We can it's move it. I mean, that's a line it item. Should, if anything, it should be in part time. Is there a part time? No. No. We can move it to 278. That's not a big deal. We'll just make that 31. Just, it's just keeping it cleaner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. We talked about this at the budget committee meeting last week, too, but I think she has in there in her budget the, the, 60, side, the, the sidewalks. Yeah. I think we should pull that out and we should plan to use the building. Maintenance reserve, in my opinion. Yeah, no, that's I agree. Not part that's, of, it's not. That's not a rec thing. We yeah. can't though because it's for the building maintenance expendable oh, trust sorry, fund yeah. has to be used for the buildings themselves. It doesn't say anything about what grounds. We put a covering over it. Yeah. <laughs> then you could probably it. sneak it in. Seriously, we didn't yeah. put grounds in that. Yeah. Well, what's left of our? It was for like HVAC, work. plumbing, electrical, and building maintenance. It's been a pretty but, dry year. What's left of our ARPA funds? There's six thousand dollars in there. We just pay it right now. That's going to be a discussion for that's that's a planned discussion for the December meeting because we have to have the funds committed by the end of this year. So we have to finish community room upgrades, and then. I mean, I'm just asking if we have it. Can we? Yeah, no, meeting? that's a good point. Yeah. But we're going to use part of it for <coughs> this and that too. So I think. No, rec revolving. This room's rec revolving. Right. That room's ARPA. Okay. So I think we had we had earmarked about thirty thousand of the remaining ARPA funds. Of which there's 60 and change so we're still 30 something that we got to spend I'm just saying we've got a month and a half can I spend six thousand dollars to pave it we'll to take it out of next we year's budget we have right we don't have to spend it we don't have to spend it we just have to commit it just no, but, but no, that's, we that's... can put that down for discussion okay Yes. If you have another hidden thing in there, I'm okay with that. I'm just asking, like, if I go to cut sixty two hundred dollars. I have to replace the server. All right. Well, still, it's not going <laughs> to. No, cost. it's not going to cost that much. <laughs> Thirty thousand dollars. No, it's but not then I know. Like, I think the other thing we could consider for the ARPA funds to pull out of the budget is everybody needs new computers. Yes. Well, that that's that's why it's all my planned discussion for the second meeting. I'm sorry. Okay. You're good. All right. I'm waiting on my quotes to come through for but that. But those are all again. Those are one thousand, two thousand dollar items. So. If you're looking for big ticket items but they all add up to about 12 so right but that's still only half of the additional 30 something thousand this is six that I can take out today out of this next year's operating budget cycle yeah right. it's only yeah. I mean I think six thousand dollars is not that much to cover that mm -mm. and that's and I don't know if she does she have a quote for this or yes. is she guess it Nope, she got a quote. I think uh, Manchester Paving gave her Is a quote. Is that going to do a good enough job with the, the base and stuff like that so it doesn't fall back? We have far? to do, so there were, there were drainage concerns. I mean, one of the things that we needed to make sure that we took care of the runoff from the roof. So um, one of Alan's proposals was to add a gutter system, at least take care of this side so that we don't have the water dumping into this corner by the, gym, the back gym doors. Mm -hmm. um, so we would have to deal with that and we'd have to put some type of drainage in place to get the water to flow out toward the field rather than the pocket up here. So there are some other moving pieces, but they're all somewhat factored into the reports. All right, but I mean, if she already has a quote, we could potentially take that at your next but I think yes. to, to her point about like Alan talked about the drainage and stuff. I think if you spend six thousand dollars to put in new sidewalks and don't fix the drainage, yes. it's useless. Right. 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 So but if we at least commit that six thousand right. to come out of ARPA, then we can have a plan moving forward on how to do it as a whole. I mean, no. Maybe you ought to add the gutters and the, the, the gutters that's could right. be that's a building right. maintenance so, yeah. item. That's a building add, maintenance? Yes. So it can be exterior building maintenance but not grounds building Correct. maintenance. Correct. But even if we added gutters from the ARPA funds, can we do that? Yes. So I don't want to take away from the resident. If we want to update computers and server, like a well, big 
technology money. thing, but, but it, if it, I'm just thinking if there's, if there's can, money left over, between yeah. if we needed to allocate, <clears throat> is that going to cover? If I look back on on page one, line fifteen. Yep. What are those? Are those PCs? Potentially that was what you're that was just um, taking care of two PCs in my office out of the four. That's six, right? Because I, I need eight. To. I need eight. No, I didn't even kept calculate. So I need. I have eight workstations throughout this building that need to be replaced. That were their 2013. Um, they've been upgraded to Windows 10. That's what we're running right now. But we're running into memory and performance issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I covered the rec. Um, I think four, four within the office. Seven. Alana's is eight and then we'd need one for Lori would be nine plus the server so ten that's fine I mean if you bring that proposal that might potentially reduce this line item of 17 yes down. yes so the yes so um, there's 450 in the planning and zoning budgets to cover Alana's computer we could remove those I could get rid of the 1700 in the executive and then we can remove um, the one in the town clerk budget which was oh, that's great that's just all like yeah. things that we know that potentially could help us right that helps us a lot yeah. we don't know potentially yet. if we get our ducks in a row but i think we've made a pretty good yeah can you i can send you what i've changed to Ellen, okay and yes then if thank we you can for kind that. of I want to pull that together for i can use to present to the budget committee for at least what we have now and then walk them through we have to make so quite a few minutes anyway did you make changes on the fly as we were talking about them mm -hmm. how much closer are we well, well we added yeah we added ten thousand dollars that didn't help so we're, we're down forty five thousand dollars but once we have some of those potential ARPA funds we can pull some of those projects out of the budget too which is probably gonna be close to twenty three thousand so That'd be big. Yes, yeah, so Courtney did get, I was just pulling up her CIP request that was submitted, and she got a quote from Manchester Paving to do a 200 foot section, four feet wide, um, three inches of hot asphalt after compaction, $6,200. So that would require, obviously, Highway doing the site work, but $6,200 for the paving is an accurate quote. 62 or 69? 62. Okay. Yeah, it says 62. Did it say it in here? Yes, it did. I'm sorry. I've looked at too many numbers. But it's the gutters and drainage. But that can come out of the building reserve fund. Reserve fund because it's for the structural part. Right. It Would could, you be able to pull together the, in there? the reserve fund balances for the meeting up there? Yes. Today? Yep. Um, I was trying to do it real quick, just a quick calculation. So, based on, <coughs> through the third quarter expenditures that we've requested reimbursement, that was seventy-five thousand of the hundred and fifty um, that we added to the fund this year. So, we should have close to that left. We had pretty much depleted the balance that was in there prior to. I think we cut it down to like five thousand. Um, so, okay, I think that's it. Pretty good first chisel. Mm -hmm. We get to move on. Would you like to talk about tax seating? Sure. Yes. Not really, but. <laughs> uh, Tracy Black, our tax collector, has presented 14 properties that are eligible for tax seating. Her drop dead date is tomorrow that she will be deeding these unless you act on the deed waivers that are being presented to you tonight um, these are four properties that are in tax lien status for taxes due 2021 some prior to that uh, because there's been deed, wa deed waivers that are presented um, the bulk of these properties you've seen year after year um, I will say that 14. Um, I'll say three quarters of them are located within Cedar Waters, and they're properties that either have no value, diminished value, dilapidated buildings, or we just need to clean up the tax rolls. So I'm going to recommend, as um, 
chatter assessor is trying to get in and lay eyes on the properties so he can get a fair assessment on them um, I think that we'll probably be cleaning those up but I would recommend that you um, accept a deed waiver or approve a deed waiver on those ones um, and then there are four other improved properties that Dale has gone out and done an initial assessment on, two of which I've been contacted by the property owners and we've worked out a payment agreement to get them out of lien status. Um, I've explained to them that if we're going to set up a monthly payment that they have to be um, current and obviously if they skip payments then that nullifies the agreement and you can deed them at that point. So. I have two other properties that I need to make contact with and I would ask that you accept a deed waiver tonight um, so that I can potentially work with those property owners over the next two weeks and potentially do the same. Was, I thought I saw like two payment plans. Two payment plans, correct. And then there was a third one that said that they were working to set a payment plan up or whatever. Um, nope, there's only been two. I thought there was an email that said something about that was the daughter. That, that was the one. one. Yep, yeah, that was okay. the daughter of the oh, one that I sent you today. Other. Okay. Yeah. Got it. so that. All right. Yep. Yeah, so I like she had tried to set everything up for yeah. mom, yeah. and this guy slipped through the cracks, and then they were like, okay. yeah. so, so that was so, that was so that's one, one of the new ones. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They're playing catch up. So. <clears throat> how many what? I have payment agreements on two of the fourteen properties. I have two more that I need to reach out to the property owner and see if we can establish. Thank you. You're welcome. And then the rest are Cedar Waters properties. Okay, so it's just, so it was only four that were not Cedar Waters? Uh, map 12, lot 9 1. Map 1 13. Map 4 4. So five. And map 38, lot 3. Yeah, so I, I think it's only four of the 14. The rest are cedar, cedars water, cedar waters. Even the map 24, lot 103. 4103 is, um, that's actually on Robin Hood Drive. That is a property that contains a dam. Um, I'm just reading Tracy's note. If there's a dam on the property, and we take it, does the, da the, does the dam then become the town's responsibility? Okay. It's. It's really unclear. We need to do some additional yeah. research before we take on a potential burden. And that's part of our tax deed right. policy is that <coughs> you don't want to take on any additional undue liability, which is why we often waive. We talk about Robin Hood Drive. Yes. The only dam there on is a reason. And this, I don't believe that's the property. I don't believe the dam is part of that property. No, the dam is part of the giant yellow. Yeah, this is goes all the house. way down on the end of Robin Hood Drive. Okay. Like the road stops and it goes to somebody's it, it house. It actually contains the road, I think. Or something. Where it goes but there's down. a reason why we haven't took this. And I'm trying to recall because I think this has been on our docket now for at least six years that we could have taken this. A long time. At least two. A lot, and we have chose not to. Is it an earthen dam now? This is not a dam there. There's no dam there at all. Yeah. It's 100 feet of water, frontage. It's 150 feet wide, or 150 feet long, 20 feet wide. Right. Do you have the text? Thanks it's essentially the road, the end of Robin Hood. Yeah, and I think, because I remember, I don't think the owner even cared if we took it right so there was a reason that we didn't I can't I can't remember I'm sorry I just I mean yeah the only is there yeah what does the deed say about like they say even if you offer it to an abutter for next to nothing Gets it off See, our it doesn't exist. It's like that little right there. It's not really a lot. Well, it's, it's not. Yeah. Technically, it is a lot, but it's not. It's a separate lot of record according to the deeds, which is why it has mm -hmm. its own, but that's where it is. The road comes in. But So I wonder water. what it oh. says on the deed for 
you know, what does the deed actually say? Oh, there it is. Because it probably comes with a bunch of <coughs> rights to pass and things like that. <clears throat> I don't know that there would have rights to pass anything. Well, that's true. But then everybody would have rights to pass. Welcome to Nottingham Lake. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. We can pull the deed. Newtown Beach. Newtown Beach. Newtown Beach. Newtown Beach. Uh, <laughs> you say Newtown? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, it's not Cedar Waters. <laughs> Wrong like. But there was a reason why we didn't take it. I know we talked about it last year. I thought it was, it was a potential liability for the town. Right. I mean, that's that's what I, we were led to believe last year. That's it's got to be a potential liability. But well, but it's I been going. It was, it's been going on for so many. I mean, it's for the number that it's owed. For it's this, been, yeah. It's been going on for a long time. <laughs> I mean, we should get this cleaned up, but. So, to be clear on what you're going to be asking, you're going to ask for a deed. I'm asking for waiver. a deed waiver for. Do you want to do these individually? A lot of these. What? Do you want to go through everyone individually and vote uh, yeah, for it? Um, I think you can probably do them in a bulk vote if you're willing to accept a deed waiver on all of them, as long as you list out, it, reference them by map and lot. That would be helpful. So I'll make a motion to approve deed waiver on the following properties, eligible for tax deed. Um, map 12, lot 9-1. Map 24, lot 103. Map 23, lot 2-112. Uh, uh. Map 23, lot... <coughs> 2-18, map 23, lot 2-9, map 38, lot 3, map 23, lot 2-77, map 24, lot 143, map 23, lot 2-105, map 23, lot 2-106, map 23, lot 2-107, map 23, lot 2-108, map 23, lot 2 143 map 23 lot 2 50 map 23, lot 2 100 map 1, lot 13, map Four, lot four. I'll oh, second. Was that the team? Was that four teams? That's all of them. All right. Thank you. Motion to second. second. He's thinking. He's chewing it over. <coughs> Did that match all your waivers? Well, I wouldn't again. Yeah, I was going through here. There's a couple I had questions on, but. You know, I don't. I mean, all the cedar water ones. We should just get rid of all those. Right. Uh, but I, I just had a question on some of the other ones, like you know, like that one. And that's one of the property owners that I want to make contact with. Right. Um, that would, that seven one. Seven Barrington Road. Seven Barrington Road is in probate. The family's trying to work through it right now, so that's why we're proposing a deed waiver to allow them to do that process. Because it's a valuable piece of property. It is. Right. So I don't want to, I mean, again, that's where. So should we do the seed and water ones as a bulk and do these other ones separately? If you're doing a waiver on them, why? Can you right, separate a waiver on them, right. If yeah. we're going to still, so. How long is the waiver for? A year. For next year. Yeah, we do it again next year at this time. So it gives them a year to get the payment plan straightened out and get out of the payment status. plan should disappear from our list. Okay. We just have to approve the, the All right, deed so waiver. Those, are, in order. those the two payment ones aren't in that list. No, they are because we, okay. they, we still have to. They still have to. We have to waive the deed and then she. Can okay. create the payment plan. Okay. I'm trying to understand yep. how this stuff works. And if they're yeah. egg, we can. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. For a couple of sure. All right. So we still waive them. What? They have to set up a payment plan. If that's the plan, I'm fine with that. 
the ones that we talk about here for Cedar Waters to take over. So, so I mean, you, you can and we're just trying to have you them. can choose to tax deed them, and then we can try to sell the deeds back to Cedar Waters, and they can go in, demolish, do whatever they need to do of the properties in there. I think there was only one that had some value. The rest had either been demolished or removed or have no value. Right. So what happens if we take possession of a cedar water property? You're so you're only taking pair you're only taking possession of the improvement. The it's not the land. Right. It's just the building, whatever. And then what do we do with it? You know? Half of these, if you read, there's no building left. It's right. Gone. I know. That's what I'm saying. But some of them, if they plan to build on the it, title at that point. Right. But and if they're going to build on it, they still have to get a permit. In order to get that permit, they have to pay the back tax. Because Cedar Water owns the property. Right. They own the land. Right. They own the land. So, if so, what do we do to? I guess how do we set it up so that we get our money for? whatever they end up doing with that. You're property. probably not because a lot of these, especially the buildings that were removed <coughs> right. however well. many years ago, we've been taxing something that's not been there. So it's probably a matter that you're you're going to have a recommendation coming forward from the assessor to abate those taxes because they never should have been but, assessed in the first place. Right, but, but they'll destroy the property exactly. and when. <coughs> when, and we've now had an ownership change within Cedar Waters itself, right. so. I know, that's what's messy. Right. That's why there's a demolition permit process or the, the raise permit so that we know when a structure has been removed and technically it's a misdemeanor offense to remove a, a taxable structure that has taxes due on it. So. But trying to go back on that now. Well, right, and who would own would owe that money would it be the landowner or the, the, home the homeowner the person who owned the building but who actually took down the buildings too mm -hmm. some of them it just says it's in disrepair right right some of them just say disrepair they should just be taken down anyway because they're probably not safe <clears throat> what did you guys decide about Bridget Stella? Nothing yet. No, no change. No. <clears throat> like the one that's in probate, we're not going to. Right. I mean, wave I'm, it. I'm okay with waving them all at this point because. How do we get them off I'm the not, books completely? Right. Exactly. That's what's the process? Right. We tax deed it. You're forgiving. So. You're forgiving the debt. You're holding on to it for three years, which enables the current property owner to come forward and buy back the property by paying the the tax liability plus, if it wasn't their primary residence, a 10 percent of the current assessment and penalty. So, I mean, you're, you're clearing the slate that way, but if they don't step forward, then you hold on to it for potentially three years, sell it either by sealed bid or through real estate, however you choose. Right. And but we can't sell. do that with Cedar you Waters. Can't, right. No, right. exactly. Right, there's no value. So I'm saying, how do so we with get Cedar it Waters, off our you, books? Right, so to we get it, to do this every you, year. you've got two options. You can either tax deed them right now if they do charge some type of a site fee for each of these units, even if it's a non-existing because our, the deed will then be in the town's name, you could potentially pick up that liability for something that's not there. Um, so you could tax deed it and then make an agreement. Hopefully they would want to purchase that back so they could improve the property and then transfer it by deed to the next site owner, whomever it may be. Um, you, take, you do this option by taking it by tax, doing a deed waiver and then waiting for the recommendation <coughs> to come in from the assessor once he has a chance to get out there, lay eyes on the units that are out there and say, look, you know, this probably hasn't been here for X number of years, suggest an abatement for whatever the amount may be and assume that the 
the back taxes would be written off. And the abatement will take it off our rolls. Correct. So it's six of one half dozen of the other, however you want to handle it. Is there a way for us to take it and then push it back to the landowner? Like the ones, the buildings that are like still existing. There's nothing on Cedar Waters that's easy. The, the least messy way is to just kind of do this. Just, just do what we're going to do, right. but but yes, we I almost mean, you need. could take it by tax deed and then deed it back. I'm, the, there's only one that's really in question. That's the one that does have some value. Right. There was like a couple. It was Where we that was like low value and mm -hmm. one that seemed like it was. And then we have people that have passed on. We have to do the the legwork to locate the heirs. Go to work for no money. Right, I know, and that's I, exactly. I'm just trying, trying to get them off the books, but right. trying. That's all I want. I don't want to look get, at them every year. Trying for us not to get completely hosed. So Cedar Water is still like an enigma. Like I mean, it shouldn't be the way that it is. Anyway, it's <laughs> kind of like a. It, we almost need to like change how it's viewed. Like I mean, it, I, it if be, it's like an RV park, right, it would it be completely be different. Like it needs to be, which a trailer park is a good example of kind of like what Cedar Waters is, where the, the trailer park owns the land, right? And then exactly. there are trailers on it. I mean, but some of these are actually real buildings. Some of them are trailers or war trailers. We must be getting a tax dollar from Cedar Waters for the property. For the land. Right. Yes. Now, I assume that's one big... Parcel. Parcel. Correct. It's a big parcel. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like we almost need to have, like, a meeting with this person to try to find a path. Yeah, exactly. Something. It's like maybe to, to, the to, building inspector right, in that. Right. A to little kind bit. of get a path forward with the property Keep owner. That in there? Yeah, I thought he... So he was able to get it, and it, that's... So the notes that came from the building inspector, he was granted permission to go in there. He went around to all the sites, and that's where he did his assessment. Our assessing department has not been... Our, our Avatar, Chad from Avatar, has not been granted permission to go in there um, since Dale's visit, which was in the spring, early summer. Um, they've since requested that um, we have to contact them for permission to right. enter the property. So, so the, the property owner legally can't tear down the building. Correct. Because the building's not his. They own the property. And this is just a big giant mess. And if the things are basically vacant because people have passed on or just abandoned it or whatever, and we're holding on to these things that we don't want to pull the deeds because, and you know, so yes, I think we need to probably have a meeting with them, to kind of figure out a path forward. Yeah, I don't know if it needs to be like rezoned or do something, but this is not the path that no. works anymore. No. Or we can't be denied access or something. Like, I mean, it, it's weird. I don't know if the state, New Hampshire Municipal, would have any guidance on how to get rid of this. What to, what to turn this into or have them come to the planning or zoning or something in China. <coughs> you're, you're talking about a pre-existing use. Right. But well, I, you, I don't know what's left. What is left for actually valid So, I, I mean, typically if we were to treat this as a campground. Um, or a trailer it, park. Or, or a trailer park. I mean, technically the onus <laughs> per state statute is that by April 1st, the campground owner or mobile home owner, mobile home parks are different because normally you're on a site and you're paying a rent for the land that you're on it's it's different but the same so technically they have to they're supposed to provide to the town by april 1st every year an inventory of who's where what improvement is on there so like if it was a campground and it was an rv that was registered as roadworthy um that would exempt them from property taxation, but they would have to be able to supply on demand proof of that, that there's a valid registration. If not, then it does become taxable property. Right. This would, 
it, because so, it's not defined as a campground. Right, but it sounds like it probably should have been. So. Right. Yeah. Or an RV. Forty park. years ago. Right, I understand that. Or right, not an RV, but a trailer park. But, but I, I guess so. How many properties are we still actually collecting taxes on? Right. From there. And how many are we not collecting taxes on because we don't know what's there because we have not been allowed in there. And and does I'm assuming that these places are in theory paying rent for use of that property. That's a good assumption. Assumption. There must be some type of a membership fee or right. I mean they had a website last time I looked, but whatever. Right. I'm sure it's that still on the, the sign. Yeah, well, the sign's down. Well, mostly. The bottom half of it's on with right. the website. The I don't know if it's still valid the or not. Half is only there. <laughs> There's a fair amount of homes in there, though. Is, is there? I don't know what's in there. Obviously, I've never been in there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> as it stands, there was a motion and a second to okay. tax deed um, the properties as listed in. I'm okay with that. So I would say. I would this call here. I'm ready to go. Yep. So I'm happy to set up a meeting with the owners, whether you want it at the board level or if you want me to initiate it with perhaps Chad and Dale. Um, or if Dale's able to get owners. in, have Chad get in with Dale. Or hmm. Yes, the new owners. We need Would you like me to invite them to a board meeting? Or if you think there's Talk another way. the budget season. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially if we're doing this now, then it's, we have time. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We're done with discussion? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Nope. I make a motion uh, to accept payment agreements for map 38, lot 3, and map 4, lot 4. I'll second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 No opposed. Okay, then we go sign your needs. item was did you guys want to talk about that tonight or did you want to um the for legal services, legal services right did you have an opportunity to connect with any i can say that none of these are the school the school's attorneys uh, but have you not had an opportunity to look i at have their done references? reference checks on them okay. yes do you have I, I don't have any bad things to say about any of the, mm -hmm. the firms that have put in proposals was there any real difference between any of them? Oh, I didn't date it. Just... I liked the proposal personally from Drummond Woodson because I thought they detailed out in a, a much better way their contact um, policy within 24 hours that we get back to Ellen. Um, um, I have to look to see which one I liked the best. It's I just 24 like, hours saying, hey, thanks, we got your. Uh... Well, it's something. It's something. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, right. but I, I think having more uh, holds quicker them accountable. resolution to, or, or answers to questions, whatever it might be. And they actually, again, I think that any company service model would you assume would be that, but again, they made an effort to actually put it into the proposal, so. Does anybody have any of the non-one that we've had before? Like Sewell also like said they respond within 24 any. hours. Was that? Sewell also anything. said that too, didn't they? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so Kidder, Loman, and they also had a um, time frame. Yeah, okay. Those were the only two that outlined it. Um, Those are the two I kind of.
you said the school doesn't have any now are we not allowed to have the same one as no well? we were just wondering if the they last meeting if the, if the school used any of these is there any uh, did they ever though i guess part of the question oh i that i didn't ask that question I see Germans. Very nice page, but um, so the Mitchell group is servicing the town of Barrington this year. I don't know how many years. It says they've been servicing the year of the, the town of Barrington for 24 years. Which one's that? The Mitchell Group. There's also members on this that are in this guy here, which are members of, of select boards for their town. There's a guy that that's also, I mean, specializes in land use, which yeah, I mean, it was right. You had a better environmental right. kind of thing. Of they know where you're coming from as they a town. Got a bigger scope. Yes, exactly. And they have attorneys on staff that specialize in all facets of municipal government, whether it's land use or employment law. Right. <clears throat> Would any of this, like, was the Drummond end up saving us money in, like, planning or something like that, or? No, they, ha they have land use attorneys. So they, they have attorneys that are specific to the topic. So whereas right now with Upton and Hatfield, Susan Lowry, does all of our inquiries she has some associates that will sometimes sub in um, she's our main point of contact where if let's just use uh, Drummond and Woodsum we might have Matthew Surge for our general legal counsel um, general questions that come up during board, board of selectmen meetings where he's you know there's another attorney within the firm that handles strictly um, employment law related stuff so it our point of contact would depend on the top, the subject matter and I think the other firm that we're in discussion, they, it, to me, when I was reviewing it, they have attorneys that do focus on all those things, but it's just this overlap, some overlap, which is, I guess, kind of nice, but again, there's just not as many. Right. And then they focus on so many other things, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a lot of other. <clears throat> and the sole firm seemed very similar to that, where you have one point of contact, but then you have areas of specialty that...
I didn't get to fully like review all of them in detail. I just got them not that long ago. But right. and how did you feel on the on the firm? Um I, I mean, I, I did rate them. I mean, it's it's difficult to, obviously, our current provider, there, there's a reason why we're putting out for proposal, not only just to make sure that we're doing due diligence and, you know, making cost-effective decisions for the towns, but just based on, you know, um, some of the performance concerns that we've had over the past year and a half that I've been here. Um, you know, so I, I mean, rating wise, I did have um, Drummond and Woodson as my top pick with the sole firm number two, followed by Upton and Hatfield, and then the fourth being the Mitchell Group. I just, I wasn't really impre impressed with the package that the Mitchell Group put together for us. There was nothing that really stood out to me. Um, they seem like they're a fairly young firm. Right. So, I, I mean, cost wise, they're all very much in line. So, if there is going to be a change, then. It's going to be a change for the matter of change, not for cost effectiveness, in my opinion. Yeah. So, did you say, I mean, I'm, I'm with you on the same one. Mm -hmm. These are the two that I was looking at. I, I lean to this, the Drummond one. I think I had told you in the past, I, um, I had contracted with the sole firm in my prior town. I had only worked with them about six months before I came to work here, so I didn't have a whole lot of experience. I wasn't dissatisfied with them. I had been through the interview process with them, so um, they were the top pick in that town. But I can't speak for Drummond and Woodson other than you know I, I did get feedback from four other towns that are very happy, and they've had them representing them for over ten years, so. I think that speaks volumes as well. Okay. Which one? Uh, Drummond and Woodson. Now, if we selected something different, do we have a end of contract with Upton and Half? We don't actually have an active contract with them. I think they're just. I, I don't. I I couldn't find when it was last put out when Legal Services was last put out to for proposal from the town. Um, so. That was part of the reason why we did it. We did it for here for audit for legal audit services and you know our, our routine propane and fuel oil bids. Is there anything outstanding that we would still be required to use up in that field? Um, anything still mm -hmm. open? We could obviously continue that until the matter is closed. There's no reason why we wouldn't be able to attain the services of both and then. Anything new moving forward would just be with it, whatever we right. I thought it was on the school at one point. <clears throat> That's the only thing. It's like I thought this guy was represented the school at some point. I don't recall. Yeah. Could it have been the prior SAU? Uh, right. It could have been the definitely could have been it probably, most definitely was the prior SAU, yeah. but Was it with Drummond and Woodson? No, it was um, Soul. 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 Okay. And that's that's what I kind of that guy's name I remember, and that's the only thing I can remember is that guy's name. <coughs> so it probably was the yeah because they must have changed law firms. Well, they, when they moved the SCU, I think they kept the existing at the time. Yeah. But, they, I, they could have changed in the past 10 years. Right, right, who knows, yeah. Yeah, that's possible too, right. But I forgot to ask Susan. Well, are we looking to, do we feel, I've heard one, two, well, just so that you, I mean, again, hmm? Well. One thing I knew I'd looked at, that's why I watched it. that caught my eye. I want Where'd they go on this one here about the, how much they charge per hour? On which one? On Seoul? On Seoul, yeah. Seoul, how do you want to pronounce it? It's, 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 it's
I think they were all within. Yeah. No, because no. See, this is where it was. They increased it for the K just to get like. Well, see, though they had see this guy, you know, they're okay, thirty two forty five. If you were on Soul, you're on page eleven. Okay. Now, if you go to reach page sixteen of Drummond. You know, the hourly rate proposal, you might as well just throw that on out. That doesn't consist. Because the two people they're using for us as legal contact, if you see this, because they're shareholder rates, they're 310 an hour to 245 an hour. Oh my God. I mean, it's 65 bucks an hour is quite a bit when you do 10 hours, right? I mean, I mean over the course. So they're, you know, I mean, these guys, again, I'm just, they break it down in this way here, where when I first read this, I thought they were $210 an hour, and I thought it was good, but then they tell you that, you know, we don't use paralegals very often, so the 155 an hour for them doesn't consist. Their associates as the 210, you know, they should have shareholder general rate for municipal legal services, 245, but then when you go down, you know, the contract for legal service be awarded, the shareholder labor rate for employment, legal services is 310 an hour. So, I mean, they're, are, are, is the Drummond and Woodson gonna start charging us differently for what, we, what we're asking for? Is it a straight hourly fee that we're paying for their services? You know, because nothing's gonna be worse is that when Betsy gets a bill, if the bill one day the hourly rate's this and the next bill comes in is something's different the hourly rate's this the rates for specialty practice work are typically higher than general municipal law rates shall be determined on a case-by-case -case basis by specific agreement with said council for that unique legal work i think i mean not written that. by a lawyer uh, yeah i i yeah. look at it i look at it as the general legal services that we're accustomed to would be 245 an hour <clears throat> but the issue we just went through was not going to be no. two forty-five an hour. No, it's not. Now is the other guy with the, the, is... the price he said in there? I mean, is well, one of them is two sixty-five an hour? Still, <clears throat> but again, I'm just yeah. I mean, we're sp we all I think agree that these are two firms that we we're we're leaning towards. So as we're leaning towards, we must now start getting at the little weeds and, I mean, we, again, I'm just opening up the conversation, you know, just. Would you like to invite them in to ask these questions? If they're gonna be representing the town, you can interview sure. them like you would any other candidate. If we do that, we need to prepare yes. ourselves for an interview. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. I mean, I think this is an open sense. discussion. I'm not the one making the. I'll, I'll make it. I mean, if you have questions on something that does change the cost quite a bit, then let's get it. Well, again, uh, there, there's, you know, you, we, we budget a certain amount, right? And, you know, there's odd cases of years where we go over because of legal services <coughs> are, that are out of our, you know, if we get sued, it's not, you know, that's out of the normal realm. Right. So that's not part of our normal budget, but you know how many times the planning board is going to use them? Because if, if you watch the meetings, there's always some point coming up there. Well, we're going to check with legal. You know, so I mean that's and then even zoning. You say the watch them. They always say in their meeting, we're going to check with legal. Right. And then how many times do we not as? But again, we. But again, I think that's the two forty-five an hour rate. Well, that would be. It'd be a lot more, yeah. You know, clear if they said, you know, these guys here said, oh, this three ten would only be on X X or X yeah. in these three minimum scenarios. That'd give you a lot more comfort of why don't the line. I why don't I get clarification on that specific question, and then I can feed it back to you. And then if you still want to meet with them to, if, if there's additional questions, then we can set something up and plan your questions accordingly. Sounds good to me. Everybody good with that? Yeah. John, good with that? I'm good with that. Yeah, because again, yeah. 
No, we get it. I'm just one company seems a little bit more. Good question. Do you want me to ask across the board, or are we just talking about the two top candidates as of right now? Say the two. Just the two. Yeah, just these two. Um, it would be Drummond and Woodson. I don't know what to say. He's scared me by now. And um, Soul, S O U L E. Leslie, Kidder, Sayward, and Lowman. P L L C. Based on that alone, I'm thinking the first one. And we shortened it for a Soul Firm. Yeah, because it's even. Never mind. We got the point. We're good. All right. Okay. Another Hammer forward. Uh, action item. Well, action item. We keep talking about budget. All right, budget is a continuous action item right now. Yeah, it's <laughs> the one that's going to be there. Do we want to do a workshop just for budget? Are we going to deal with all this other stuff? Yeah, we might need to. I was thinking that too, Steve, at one point. Maybe see how the December 2nd meeting goes. Correct. Yeah, because we'll you have there. the holiday in between, so you'll have a shortened week next week. Okay. okay. Uh, one thing that's been kind of kicking out there for either the budget or the HARPA money or whatever is the oil tanks out front, either swapping to propane or whatever. But. They weren't failing imminently, but if, if again, if it comes down to something we could swap over for X amount for ARPA money, we could do that. Or if not, we got to at least start saving some money aside for it because that was coming up on something that needed to be done with the tanks we're getting. Older. We're going to move them from underground to above ground. Or, or move to propane. part of the CIP? No. 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 No, it was um, it was it was something that John Scruton had brought up as an item that should be addressed. It wasn't noted to be a concern. The company came out and evaluated. There was no concern about leakage or anything like that. But um, just because of the underground tanks that were removed from the Flutter Street garage, that's how that came up. No, it's heating oil. Uh, they're in, they're right in front of the kitchen underground. So the talk was to remove them from underground, replace them with above ground. Do we know what's there for tanks? Probably. Just... I'm sure we have a record. Or, of tank or swap the propane, which the new furnace was put in, could be converted to propane. Yes. And the that... propane tanks could be left underground, so we're not building an additional ugly structure on the front of our ugly building. Right. right. Well, no, I would so yeah, <laughs> It, it would just, con oh. we're trying to make everything look nicer, just adding these, this weird thing onto the front to hold oil tanks would just be weird. But it, Ugly. it's something we got to keep, or in the building maintenance fund or something like that. Mm -hmm. We don't want to drop it, because it, I don't even know if Alan knows that that was kind of on the list. But we started talking about it, and then we stopped talking about it, and then we stopped. We have... Oil. It's number two. No. The, the existing it's, it's oil our, tanks. Yeah. It's a thousand gallon underground tank. Just one? For number two, correct. So these tanks are using oil now? Yes. Always have. Okay. <coughs> we have no idea how old they are or do we? I don't remember. All of that discussion, we can have that brought up. I just okay. wanted to raise it back up as something that needed to not be forgotten. Okay. Anything else? I did have a non-public, but I actually don't need a non-public. I can just announce that we are, um, we are down another firefighter. Um, Vash Rossfield resigned his position and his last shift was last Thursday. I think it expired Thursday at 7 a.m. Um, so we are, we had brought on a, they have three, three now, four, four. There's four full timers. So now yeah. there's two vacant positions. Yeah. We're close. We almost had six again, but we're, we're back five. to four. 
<laughs> so close. What are you running now, Eric? Four full timers. So that position has, um, it's been actively, or actually the full-time positions have been actively advertised um, at Fire Standards and Training and um, on their sites. I reactivated it on the website and we're going to post it as far and wide as we can. Just wanted to that for budget stuff. Are we still low on our hourly rate for firefighters? <laughs> Are we, still we, we had brought that up, but when we came up, we didn't come up into the middle. Correct. We like <laughs> barely came up into the outer reaches of mm -hmm. local areas, so I'm just wondering. I'd have to do another um, salary. Allenstown just did one that I participated in, so that grabbed a lot of our area towns. I can pull that together and just see where we are in line. Um, one of the, the other areas is the part-time per diem staff. Um, they're based on whatever certification level they're at. They're a lot lower than the full-timers. So usually if you're a part-time position doing the same position, you usually compensate at the hourly rate for the fact that they don't have a benefits package, but we're much reverse. I think we're still down in the 18 to $20 range. I mean, the two line items added up equal roughly the two line items, mm -hmm. but do we need to look at as something that we need to make margin into? Cut more, cut more out of the sand budget. <coughs> Just asking the, another budget item to possibly discuss because it's not going to get any better still being the lowest paid department. Nope. Uh, anything else today, buddy? Before I open it to public comment, you two got anything to say? Not this morning, but the budget committee has a better chance. <laughs> no, they've been very efficient yeah, this no year. Meetings this year. <laughs> Still early. Um, <laughs> all right, well, that's everything for us tonight. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Make a motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Good night, Nottingham. We'll see you in about a week, two, two weeks. weeks.